Hashtag. Now, uh, freshened up the power panel there. Fantastic stuff, uh, Richo. Uh, let's have a look at Brave Smash because we always said he would push out into the black and uh, with this rain about the small field, things are happening here. The short price favourites are getting beat, but Brave Smash uh, now $2.10, very popular. 75 over, well, well over 80% of the money is for Brave Smash now. The second favourite, Mr Sneaky, who was a bit slow. He'll drop out last. Brave Smash not flash out of the gate. Beginning very quickly, thrown him, flippant, and also still a collision going up on the fence there. The three contesting the lead, and Brave Smash gets away from the rail a length back. Two and a half then to Ken's Dream, and on the fence, Mr Sneaky last. Thrown him front runner. Comes down the side of the course, in charge now. Steadies the tempo from flippant. On the fence, still a collision. Brave Smash is getting a butte run. A length away outside of those. Ken's Dream, he's back two lengths back. And on the fence, Mr Sneaky, the speed came right out of the race at the 600 metres mark. The front runner is thrown him from flippant, and Brave Smash Smash rides up to join the pair three wide. Still a collision on the fence. Then Ken's dream, Mr. Sneaky between runners. Only two and a half links covers the field. Thrown him the front runner. Brave Smash is about to go up and put the foot on the throat. Beggy Hind, though, still a collision looking for a run. Mr. Sneaky getting to the outside. They're homeward bound now on the Australia Stakes. Thrown him got away a length on Brave Smash, having another dig at him. Mr. Sneaky's running on. Thrown him the front runner. Brave Smash can't get there. Mr. Sneaky's running on. Thrown him's in front. Zara's running at this to perfection, he's in clear and he's going to win it, thrown him all the way thrown him by a length on the line to Mr Sneaky and Stella Collision, Ken's dream Brave Smash stopped abruptly in the straight and flippant last in thrown him the winner, time is 110.48 and Zara just put on a masterclass there, Williams had to go up and get into the race on Brave Smash but thrown him, had a big kick left, he went very slowly mid-race he flew the leads, he went straight to the front, and then he had no pressure. And for a bit... Uh, got that twinkle in the eye, didn't he, Gary Portelli, when he spoke about Exceltic? Well, they've had a marvellous uh, 12 months. Well, mate, by the sound of it going forward and maybe even taking up the running here uh, in uh, Diodoro. Uh, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how this uh, race unfolds. I'd, I'd suggest Karen just sits off uh, in about third spot here and uh, ready to pounce on, on this favourite who's nice and relaxed, just relieving himself behind the barrier. Love vision. Gates open, they're off and racing. Well, Exotic wasn't great out, and Stratosphere jumps straight into the bridle. But Diodoro striding up on the outside, and Performer is trucking along in the early stages in third. A couple further back to Exotic, and Catanzaro is the last one. So Stratosphere wants to go quicker in the lead, really being held together by Scars. They've got 600 metres to run, and Stratosphere on day boo leads near narrowly from Diodoro. And now Kerry McAvoy pulls out three wide on the favourite Performer. Exotic jumps just behind them and Catanzaro behind the favourite. Into the straight, 400 out. Stratosphere in front from Diodora. Now performers being called upon in third. Exotics getting a split and Catanzaro to the outside. Stratosphere in front. But performer draws alongside now. It's Stratosphere and performer. Exotics two lengths off them. It's performer moving up now to head off Stratosphere. Second favourite for the slipper and performer. Oh, coming back Stratosphere. Oh, and not entirely sure here. Performer and Stratosphere. Stratosphere's really lifted to come back. Exotic third, followed then by Diodoro and Catanzaro. Well, this is very, very interesting. He's had a good think about it. There it is, a nose in the, in the favourite's favour, I'd say there. Uh, performer gets home uh, from a very impressive debut by Stratosphere there. He's a, he's a dictated terms in front. He... Nothing went right. She had to lump this winner here. Trapeze Artist, this is a good, good late move for $3.40 in from $2.20. Uh, in the last five minutes, yep, 4.20 to 3.40. So a really good late push here. Uh, will be the mark and move of the Golden Rose winner, Trapeze Artist. In saying that, the bulk of the money is still for addictive nature and global glamour overall since Wednesday. But uh, look, we've been very happy to... ...is for the Expressway Stakes, featured today at Rose Hill for 200000 at Group 2 grade. Addictive nature, very popular as it returns. 3.20 into 2.45. Now into now just out to... ...set for this year's Expressway. Jim Baker with the favourite.
favourite. They're off and racing. Great line out. Memes and Showtime have jumped particularly well and Memes is going to lead. Trapeze Artist being used up in the early stages to go to second. Then Global Glamour Addictive Nature. Showtime just easing back. And the Victorian Derby winner race high will trail the field as Memes takes the lead. Out by a length to Trapeze Artist travelling very strongly in second. A couple off to Global Glamour has been a big drifter in the market. Third on the outside of the favourite Addictive Nature. Two off to Showtime and ace high as the last one. They go inside the 750. Memes keen in the lead by three quarters to Trapeze Artist full of running. A couple off to Addictive Nature on the inside of Global Glamour. Ace high and Showtime are the last two. They get down to the business end now on the expressway and Memes just leads from Trapeze Artist. Addictive Nature's in a bit of a pocket. Memes is not giving much ground so Addictive Nature will have to come off heels. Then Global Glamour. Trapeze Artist takes the lead a furlong out from Global Glamour. Addictive Nature and Showtime. Trapeze Artist they've backed it for plenty and it's drawn clear in the expressway. Addictive Nature, Global Glamour, Showtime fight out the miners but Trapeze Artist way too good in the expressway. Beat Showtime and Addictive Nature. Then Global Glamour. Ace High got home well and Memes wasn't up for it today. Weakening to finish last of all. Well he returns to the scene of the crime. Uh, the very track in which, upon which he won the Golden Rose. Going back to last preparation back in September. He trialled brilliantly at Rose Hill in preparation for this. The money was right. To Duff late in the piece. They came for him and they came for him in their droves and he didn't fail to deliver. No, a big win. He did at both ends. He chased the, 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 the memes who went out hard. He was a sitting shot for the horses that had a bludge behind and he held them off. He's, a, he's, got seri Look, he, he's won a serious race. That's a serious race, the Golden Rose and, and you can't get that win out of your mind and uh, he's uh, really come back with a bang here today only after uh, one all his feed and works like a maiden horse and um, no but he's quite a promising horse and I always reckon he's flown under the radar and um you got to know because you know there's a, there's a couple that we we saw it of course in the preview that went forward but they it didn't really work for them so and they've drawn high will they try and adopt the same tactics or not and so many of these uh, these runners only had a handful of starts so you know I think there'll be a lot of uh, forgive the uh, forgive the pun jockeying for position early I mean the riders will probably work it out I I think with the favourite O Hood won't be too far off them. It has got a fair way back, and provided uh, she can jump on terms, I'm expect closer. Pete, you've had a look at uh, the filly. Last fit. And they're ready again. Ready to run. Set signal. Racing pure elation towards the outside, jumped away quickly, but not as fast as Lake District Girl. En Bahar is showing speed as well. Also, Downloads is pushing through with Diamond Reflection. Next, La Pava, the inside from Angel crossing the Abbey. Out deeper on the track, pure elation couldn't cross, so sneaks all the way back with Seabrook. A hood and L A for at the or Nay for at the end of the field. So the leader is Lake District Girl by about a length and a quarter to En Bahar. Two lengths away to Angel on the outside of La Pava. Further back in the field field is downloads a length and a half to Seabrook and crossing the Abbey further back in the field diamond reflection from pure elation and then well back in the field second last a hood and El Nafer is at the end around the corner 300 meters to go it's Lake District girl in front by a length to in second in Baha followed by Seabrook who's hunting the rails from La Pava crossing the Abbey further back in the field a hood trying to wind up from pure elation it's in Baha at the 200 meters and Lake District girl in Baha just in front of Lake District Girl Seabrook can't get a crack at them. A hood's flashing home. In Bahar will win it. In Bahar, a half length to a hood who rattled home. Seabrook, then Lake District Girl. Further back, La Pava and crossing the Abbey from downloads, pure relation, Angel, Diamond Reflection, and El Nafa. In Bahar, Stevie Baster at 10 10 and 340. Of course, uh, Stevie won with Ennis Hill a couple of weeks ago. So there might be a few decisions having to be made leading into the Blue Diamond, but Enbaha is the winner here. I, I think you mainly put these things down to maturity. Yep. Uh, you know, she's got the raw ability and you've got a million dollar carrot in front of her in a fortnight. It's hard to stop, but, you know, she's a filly all over. And looking them in the yard pre-race, they all look like they're a fair way away, these fillies, uh, physically and mentally, you know. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, further vision of that as well. well the pick was of the runs, was what, Seabrook? Oh, yeah, Seabrook, uh, probably for the immediate. Yep. Uh, Uhud, uh, you know, come the spring when she's a mature three-year-old filly, you know, it might... Gave Plague Stone is on the drift here. High ratio 
is now your new favourite, the Fast Neck Rock Colt, and the Smarts have jumped on. There's been two outside of uh, outside of high ratio and Plague Stone that have been specced. Ollivander's holding at six dollars fifty, but written by is one of those native soldiers going to get. And from a centre pen, jumped away quite well. Written by out to fast out wide, shows pace with Hell Vorson and also high ratio. Bionics the inside of Plague Stone as they settle from Ollivander about seventh from the running man native soldier. Hintrider picking up ground on the inside from Ben Hercules. They were followed by Titan Blinders Run Man and at the end of the field is Separate and Deep. Hell Vorson is the leader at the 650 by a neck high ratio. A length and a quarter away written by in third stalks the pace. Two and a half lengths away to Ollivander followed then by Bionics. Plague Stone the outsiders making up some ground from Hintrider Native Soldier. Then the running man Titan Blinders. Well back is Run Nan with Separate and Ben Hercules into the straight Hell Vorson high ratio at the 250. Written by makes a line of three. Plague Stone a length and a half off those. Written by goes to the lead from high ratio. Plague Stone native soldier late down the outside. Written by with 100 metres to go in front from Plague Stone who's trying to dig in but written by is game and written by wins by a half Plague Stone. Two lengths native soldier then separate run none. Further back Titan blinders. Back behind those the running man. High ratio got the stitch. Ben Hercules and then well back in the field was Ollivander with Hell Vorson, Hinch Rider and Bionics. Written by Jordan Childs for Graham Begg. The Colt by Written Tycoon out of Yao Chin. Two from two after winning on a heavy track at Sandown. But sat right off the two. And, by, and down the bottom you got the Phillies division. And as you can see here, it was a little bit quicker for the boys in 104.98, Nick, and the Phillies 105.22. Big performance here from uh, written by first and foremost. Yeah, look, I, I don't think sitting uh, three wide without cover, as Peter Moody said uh, in the lead up to this race, is too big a disadvantage from this uh, over this trip at Caulfield because he's just got the one bend. But the impressive thing is he's only having his second start as a young horse. Typically they like a rail to follow or at the very least a horse to follow. He had neither of them today and he still came out and stamped himself as a genuine contender for the Blue Diamond. Not convinced though that either of these two races anything's jumped out and gone, you've got to be on me in the Blue Diamond like we thought it might do. Um, Plague Stone wasn't too bad. It's interesting that he's a little bit shorter in markets which we'll get to in a moment for the Blue Diamond. Obviously people feel as though there's a little bit more improvement to come from him. And out of the Phillies, the winner was okay but obviously Uhud was the one that had the big flashing light and probably the the filly I'd want to take out going forward to the 1200 metres. She is, but um, she's her own worst enemy and I just don't know if she's going to clean her manners up in the space of two weeks. She seems to find trouble in her races. It's uh, a two weeks time where Plague Stone and Written By are the two Colts at the top of the betting at $7. Throw in Kinky Boom, Longleaf, a hood and then Eberhard. There's not a lot that seems like it's going to jump out of the ground now, between, basically between now and then. No, absolutely not. We make of the fillies and the Colts. Uh, this is a nice horse, this Seabrook. Uh, you can make a case that it was unlucky. He gets third on protest in the mix, uh, uh, price colours, third on the fence here. Uh, who'd maybe looking for 1,200. There's a, there's a good rap on her. So, look, a uh, few nice fillies here. Um, in Baha, the winner. Yeah, uh, did a good job. So, some nice fillies there, but you, there's no real standout. OK, and what about the Colts? Um, uh, Graham Begg, a resurgence for the stable. Yeah. He's been in Melbourne for a little while now and he's really starting to Fantastic. get his yeah. mojo yeah. back. Yeah, really nice horse written written by. There's no doubt about it. It's uh, it's made it two from two. Uh, looks a real good type. Um, I have to say, uh, Plague, St Plague Stone was four deep, no cover throughout. You can make a case he could have nearly won this race. Um, Native Soldier makes up good ground late there. You know, uh, he's going to be big odds, but I reckon Run Nanmore is going to run well in the, in the Blue Diamond. He just crying out for 1,200 metres. OK, we're going to take a break. When we... As far as our punters are concerned, and best result for them will be the top weight, Shoals. That is the field making the way around to the start here for the Kevin Hayes Stakes. Uh, Hutchie just... And racing. Smart Coupe missed the start. Missed it by a couple of lengths. Wooshka began well with Booker. Shoals the inside. Magnesium Rose trying to sneak back from that wide gate. Tulip drives through to sit about fourth or fifth. See me exceed on the inside, followed by Ultra Smart. Two and a half. Leather and Lace getting back. Smart Coupe is at the end also. Onto the course proper. 8.50 out. Booker off the rails, leading Wooshka out deeper. Shoals probing up the 
inside with See Me Exceed. They were followed by Magnesium Rose Ultra Smart from Leather and Lace, two length Smart Coupe. Tulips right there in the middle of the pack, about three off the front runner, if that. Booker at the 600 metres in front. It's been a bit tactical. From on the outside, Magnesium Rose Wooshka between them. A length Ultra Smart out wide around Tulips. Shoals oh, about one off the fence here. Shoals just trying to get a crack at them. See Me Exceed, ditto the inside. Leather and Lace is the widest from Smart Coupe. Booker at the 300 metres in front by a length Magnesium Rose. See Me Exceed the inner. They were followed by Leather and Lace unleashing on the outside. It's Booker at the 150. Leather and Lace a length and a half away. Booker clear from Leather and Lace. It's Booker. Booker's going to win it. Booker first. Second Leather and Lace. Third See Me Exceed. Fourth in the race was Tulip. Followed by Smart Coupe. Magnesium Rose Ultra Smart. Scholl second last. Wooshka was last. Booker, Dwayne Dunn for Matthew Allerton and Simon Zara. The star of their show, and Booker makes another statement in a feature race at Caulfield. The filly by Ritten Tycoon out of Noondi, win three at start seven. The Tranquil Star winner here back in October, of course, beating Shoals there, but has been... Super Cash out to defend her title. Terrific winner last year. We get to see the reappearance of the Group 1 winner, Merchant Navy, for Aaron Purcell. And, of course, the ever-popular Yadita Clark train, Rich Charm, resumes here. For the Coolmore group, with a massive uh, group of owners involved here, Mark Zara riding for Aaron Purcell. And what a devastating win it was, of course, in the Coolmore. It just, you know, uh, it was one of those wins. Merchant Navy got out to $4.40. Some punters decided that's enough. We'll take that. So there's not much between our Drossen and Merchant Navy now. In fact, the best result for punters will be Merchant Navy. Navy, but Ardross and just ahead at $3.90, $4 Merchant Navy. Good money for Super Cash, as I touched on before, and Hutchie did as well. We know how good Super Cash is. Fresh at $5. Prezado got into five. Signal racing. Merchant Navy away fairly. Flamberge out quickly with Ardrossan on the outside. Prezado lobs to third with Super Cash, followed by Hellbent. Next in the field, settling down as Canny Essen in that group. Merchant Navy's wide and back to the end with Rich Charm. Ardrossan's trying to come across with Flamberge. Burge the inside at the 800 metres. Further back in the field in third, Prezado. Super Cash the inside out deeper, Canny Essent, followed by Hellbent Merchant Navy and Rich Chalmers at the end. So the front runner at the 600, Flam Burge from Ardross, and they haven't gone that hard. Canny Essent now to third out three deep, Super Cash the inner, followed by Prezado Merchant Navy, Rich Charm the inside, and at the end of the field is Hellbent. Around the corner at the 350, stoked up Flam Burge, Ardross, and right there. Canny Essent three deep, Super Cash needs a Run. Merchant Navy down the centre, about three off the lead, running on from Rich Charm. It's Flamberge at the 200 metres with Ardrossan, Canny Essent, Merchant Navy, Super Cash getting out, but Flamberge kicks at the 50. Super Cash gets out, Merchant Navy, Flamberge, Super Cash, Super Cash wins it again. Has just won it, I'd suggest, from Flamberge, Merchant Navy for fourth. Rich Charm was there with Hellbent, Canny Essent got tired, Ardrossan ditto, and Prezado. It'll win, Super Cash. Super Cash right on the line has nailed Flamberge, Merchant Navy up for third, and it promised to be a terrific race, and it was. Super Cash, Craig Williams has won it again, two years in a row, 4.30 and 1.70. They came for it late after it was Merchant Navy and Ardrossan in the betting, but Super Cash 5.50 into 4.60. Now, just needed to get out, was bustling for a run with 200 to go. Flamberge looked to have them on toast, but Super Cash, what about the change-up pace that turn a foot late and has sprouted wings? Merchant Navy has run on really well, considering they didn't go that... You know Andrew Noblet, the trainer, well, he's a ripping bloke, and he's got the best result here. She, she's uh, done a tremendous job, this mayor, and, uh, you know, beat my old fave in Flamberge, uh, just nutted him on the line, but no doubt the story of the race, Merchant Navy, he, he's the one we, you know, we've got to be realistic in, uh, and going forward, but Nobby's done a tremendous job with this mayor, as he always does, and and places at a perfection, and uh, she's super here, fresh at this trip, track yeah. and trip. Yeah, that was her grand final today, wasn't it? She's turned up and delivered. Mm. I tell you what, the rich charm uh, heading forward uh, didn't get the best of luck today, and um, you know, at the start, as we can see with rich charm, just didn't quite get away. And it was always going to be tough, Pete, from that inside draw, wasn't it? Navy, uh, you know, he, he's uh, he was super here first up today. Get him to a big track, 1200 and maybe even 1400, and probably got to run a strong 1400 mm. for the. Uh, 
uh, Golden Jubilee, the yeah. Diamond Jubilee at, yeah. at Ascot as well, that's, so it might that, be well suited. Yeah, that's what I thought out of his run today. Yeah. He's, he's come back, he might just be looking for a bit further now. Put you both on the side for the Autumn Stakes is prevailing wins. Now into $5, Darren Weir and Damien Lane combining. Certainly well backed late in the piece from a top flock of seven fifty. Lavendi's on the drift, five out to six dollars. Villamont five fifty now out to seven dollars. Scarecrow's had support, but just easing up now. Touch six fifty. So Villamont now into five fifty is favourite ahead of now into five. Now into five Villamont ahead of Lavendi, and then prevailing winds. Siren sounds. Hello. 407 Vets Advice. Scarecrow is a late scratching at 407 Vets. Bookmakers rule a line. An announcement will follow the running of the race. Scarecrow is a late scratching. Set to run in the autumn stakes and away. Alumicon from barrier number one began well with prevailing winds. The outside and Black Sail. They were followed by Andaz straight into fourth from Astoria. Next in the field, Weapon Midfield on the fence. And then Murahib and Holy Snow out deeper. Next, Lavendi, Villamot, Mr. Field. Then by Lavendi, Villamot, Holy Snow and Mr. So and so is at the back. So prevailing winds, 750 metres to go. By two lengths to Black Sail a length of Lumicon, three lengths and as Weapon the inside next to Storia further back is Murahib and then came Lavendi would spot the speed about ten from Villamont, Mr So and So and Holy Snow is last as they come to the corner as they reach the 500 prevailing wins, every post a winner two and a half to Black Sail, niggled out of Lumicon there, the inside followed by Andaz, Weapon under the whip from Murahib to the outside, Lavendi, Villamont still second last, Holy Snow to the outside from Mr So and So it's prevailing wins getting weary at the 200 metres, still about three lengths Black Sail, Holy Snow down the outside is running on Murahib back to the inside, Mr So and So but Holy Snow drops on them, comes away and Holy Snow has won it by a length and a quarter Mr So and So, a story of third, fourth of photo, Lavendi or prevailing wins from Black Sail then came Villamont, Weapon then came behind them and as Murahib alongside of those and at the end of the field was a Lumicon Holy Snow at 14.40 and 4.40. Mick Price here at Caulfield, ridden by Michael D. Finished five and a half lengths off the winner in the Caulfield Guineas. Hadn't performed first up previously, but had been placed at Group 2, but has been far too good for them and has put them to the sword from Mr. So. And Look at this. At, at, on the turn was last. Uh, Mr. So and So just ahead of it. Villamont underneath both of them. Lavendi wide. And and you've got prevailing winds who w went off with uh, uh, quite a big lead. They didn't go lickety split, but it was still a marginal, uh, uh, a good margin, about two or three lengths. But look at Holy Snow just eat up the ground. It was a big win. Mr. So and So was terrific and has pulled up with a throat issue uh, going back through the field there. Winner terrific. Second horse very good in the return of Astoria who made its uh, way to the derby of course last year. Uh, what a return. It was a shame that Villamont uh, found him. Five winners. What does it take? Um, the, the best horses traditionally win weight for age. Uh, you know, the, the horses with weight for age performance or the promising three-year-old coming through. You know, I, I think start at the top. Start with the quality. Uh, we've seen it probably most of the day. Uh, you know, you've got your Hartnells and Toes and Stardoms. You know, they're, they're the dominant horses, the multi-million dollar earners. Great expectations abound for him this campaign. Yeah, you're right about that. He's certainly a flashy individual. He stands out in the mounting yard, there's no doubt about it. With Shillelagh, it's easy in the market, but uh, gee, she was good, I thought, over the spring, and you know, she's uh, she's run very well here at Caulfield as well. Toss and start him. Mr. Let's have a look at the market here for the CF4 stakes, courtesy of Bet365. Toss and start him. Heavily backed. $4 is your favourite. There's been huge money for him over the past couple of days. Hartnell second pick five now out to six dollars mr sneaky's at nine dollars and steady shillelagh who's playing up on her way to the barrier she's out to nine dollars now the chris waller train mare brave smash money just easing up for the japanese import with darren weir at ten dollars mighty boss the guineas winner getting well supported 13 into a group one there's some action out wide hartnell jigging about Toes and stardom standing okay. Ready, racing in the CF4. 
Lord of the Sky goes back towards the end of the field early. Dollar for Dollar began really smartly. Straight to the front from Thronum. And they were followed by Mighty Boss, who lobs to third with Shah Hitsi forcing forward, as you would expect. Followed by Brave Smash. About two links away in the field, Jester Halo. And on the inside, single gaze from Lord of the Sky, who's on the improve now after a tardy get-go. Further back in the field is Toes and Stardom, who's also pushing forward out deep on the track as they reach the 900. From Mr. Sneaky, well back, Abby Marie, two links Shillelagh. So the front runner is thrown him and then tries to put the brakes on. At the 800 metres and leads by about a length, the Lord of the Sky. Toes and Stardom, third, three deep. Dollar for dollar, fourth, the inside from Shah Hitsi. A length to Hartnell. Mighty Boss on the inside, midfield from Brave Smash. Out deeper, Mr. Sneaky with cover, followed by Jester Halo. The insider single gaze from Abby Marie and two links Shillelagh up around the corner at the 400 metres. It's thrown him and on the outside, Lord of the Sky. Dollar for dollars, poor Toes and Stardom, three deep, roused into it. Followed by Mighty Boss, Shah Hitsi. Hartnell presents down the centre with Mr. Sneaky. Followed by Single Gaze. Thrown him at the 200 metres from Lord of the Sky. Dollar for dollar behind them. Followed by Toes and Stardom. Hartnell and Mr. Sneaky. It's thrown him just in front of Lord of the Sky at the 50. Hartnell's lifting. Hartnell lifting. The big boys come back in style and won it from a photo. Flashing through Single Gaze on the inside. And Brave smash from the cloud. Followed by Thronum, Lord of the Sky, in photos. Behind those horses, dollar for dollar. Then Mighty Boss, Abby Marie, Mr. Sneaky, Shillelagh, Jester, Halo, Shah, Hitsy, And at the end of the field, Toes and Stardom. Hartnell will win it. Hartnell. Craig Williams for Jamie through. What a return from single gaze. What a mess she is. And then Thronum. And then behind them, Lord of the Sky and Mighty Boss in a bunch finish. It was a terrific race. Hartnell is the winner. Win up. Yeah, it's great. Um, he looked, when he walked into the yard, he looked fantastic. I spoke to James. Um, he just got a bit upset in the gates before we went to, they went to release the start. And he went back and he was slow and we were back. And around the bend, he didn't really turn at all. And I was quite worried about him and had to be firm with him a fair way out. And, Thank goodness he lifted to the quality of the horse that he is, so it's uh, it's great. And uh, I've got nothing down my boots, so it's even better. Up there with one of the best horses his highness Sheikh Mohammed has ever had in training in Australia. And uh, oh, he's, he's, he's the horse's third Group One uh, since arriving here, but um, of course he's been the sparring partner of some pretty good horses um, these past few seasons. And it's just amazing to see him produce such a big effort like that. When you think about how hard it is to win Group Ones and. Uh, how rarely you win them when they've sort of got to do it so tough like that from wide barriers and uh, you, you know the horse dug deep and returned so well and a great credit to um, a great credit to the, the whole operation to get him here like this. It's almost an old-fashioned Cummings training regime today because I know your legendary grandfather Bart used to love getting Melbourne Cup horses into this race first up. Hartnell ran in a Melbourne Cup, he's come to this fresh, he's bucked the trend of recent years. Yeah look um, the horse proved to me um, last preparation that he was capable of winning fresh. Um, it was his first win. Um, it was his first. I had a little funny feeling if he was to return as good as that, you know, maybe we could target a Chipping Norton with him, Chipping Norton with him se second up, and uh, he would have the fit horse on the scene. But uh, the horse does sprint very well on the fresh side, and uh, and I do like the idea of keeping him fresh. But um, we won't lock in. Lock in. Yes, the race is usually won by the established, proven top-class performer, and we saw that. Yeah, he, he was the one, uh, you know, like I said, six months ago, he was the second-best horse in the country. Sort of last couple of runs, Melbourne Cup, uh, the race before was a, a little bit disappointing, so you forget him, but he was the best performed galloper, but uh, I just don't know what to read into the race, there were so many horses that should have won it, so where does that leave the form? I'm not a punter, I'm not a form person, so I'm just not sure, like three and a half, three and a quarter lengths first to last, a uh, little, you know. Well, Hutchie, yeah, you're a punter, you are a form yeah, person. And I'm, and I'm confused, I can't help you, um, but to be honest, to be honest, the, the, cha the race race really, as Pete said earlier today, when Lord of the Sky didn't jump on terms, it looked like the rest of them didn't know what to do. Um, thrown and went for the dollar for dollar, sat into a nice spot, but it really made it messy for the likes of Toss and Stardom, who was wide. Craig Williams ended up getting a great spot, three wide with a bit of cover, without with really working, but gee, there, there were some unlucky runs, and I'm not sure. I mean, you need to go back over the times, etc., and, and have another look at each runner um, in isolation, because there were some, you know, number of unlucky runs. Does that mean that 
speed maps should just be a guide for these boys. Um, Means not, got not the be all and end all. That, like they go with an open mind. Like speed maps are written on paper, and we know what else paper is used for. Yep. Uh, the, the very bird. handily. So maybe they should forget that, ride their own race, forget what they think should happen, uh, and adapt. And that's what the best jockeys do, isn't it? Yeah. You, you don't really need to give them instructions. If something changes, bang, yeah. they make a decision. Yeah. And more often than not, it's the right one. Or at least make a decision, mate. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, messy race. It's going to take a while to work out what we do with this race from a form perspective. James Cummings said post-race, he's thinking of going and taking on Winks again in the Chipping Norton Stakes. You know, on face value, Winks probably smashes him again because that's what she does. But he's come back. He's proven that he's back in good form. That's two preparations in a row that he's been able to win first up. So James Cummings really working him. It's your horse. What would you target with him? I'd run a mile from her. She'll tow him inside out. Um, there's not many horses in the world that she wouldn't. <laughs> and if I can be a thousand kilometres away running in a million dollar race and she's not in it, <laughs> you, know, you know, there's not a lot of thought to be required, I believe. One thing I think we can take from the race, Mighty Boss was a big run, wasn't it? Didn't get a lot of room. And I think that three-year-old crop that we're seeing now, they're starting to step up and, and, and they're pretty handy. A couple of other points out of the race. Single gaze, look, she's a super popular mare. You've got a feel for Nick Oliver <laughs> again. She's run second in a, in a big race here at Caulfield. But good to see her back so well, Pete. It, it, Nick's done a tremendous job. I, I got the opportunity. Uh, she raced terrifically well all spring. Ran, ran out of a hide in the Caulfield Cup. Went round in the Melbourne Cup. But I was amazed when I saw her here in the yard. Her and Abby Marie, the other unlucky mare in the race, they'd really come on from the spring and presented very well. And I reckon both those trains that she's, I, I wouldn't run him against her. I think that he's probably better down there in Melbourne. They've always said that he was better on that leg. He's a horse that maybe they're doing it to get him fit for that 2,000 metres third up. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but switching horses state, um, I'm not a massive fan of that, but James is a trainer and, and that's his decision to make. But uh, I personally wouldn't be taking on Winks. All right, let's get into this uh, Warwick Hall and he was relaxed. He ran a poll himself later in the day as to who was the most unluckiest runner who should have won this CFO stakes. We'll show it to you a couple of times and you can make up your own mind, but there are a number of unlucky horses. Firstly, the winner Hartnell. As you said earlier in the show, Duff, he missed all the trouble by being out wide, but he was out wide and he was doing it tough. Yeah, he was, uh, but an uninterrupted run here. And I only put the poll out because I couldn't work out who was the most unlucky. I replayed this race when I got home 10 or 15 times and I'm going, well, that should have won. Then I looked at another one, that should have won, that should have won, that should have won. He dodged the trouble. Uh, Hartnell, he's, he's good, fresh, and he gets the job done there pretty well. Um, look, single gaze behind them there held up at a vital stage, uh, lost a bit of momentum. You could say she was unlucky. Brave Smash had to come back at a, uh, on the point of the turn. Uh, he was unlucky. Um, uh, I would have thought Abby Marie, just she, I would have thought she was as, as lucky, unlucky as anything. She's in the blue and white with the striped cap back in the field. Well, let's have a look at, let's just uh, focus in on a few. Single gaze first of all, tell us about her. Well, three back the inside here, just there. She's got nowhere to go and now all of a sudden she gets a run. And being a staying sort of mare, you know, it's very hard for him to get up and sprint quickly, but she was just winding up here and oh. should have nearly won, you would have said, well, she doesn't get held up. But then you can say that about four or five other runners in this race. You'd well, the fairly asset boss. colours, Mossy, Mighty Boss. Mighty Boss, yeah, and you'd have to say that he was extremely unlucky. He had Tyson Stardom leaning in on him the whole way, and Abby Marie, in the Mick Kent colours was also behind Mighty Boss and then had to angle out and try and get a run and she was unlucky as well so that's another two. Yeah. All right let's have a look at Brave Smash. White Cap, the Australian Bloodstock White Cap behind the winner Hartnell. Well he was in a better spot early and then all of a sudden gets shuffled back and then comes back again here uh, when he, he, he comes had to come back out of that and come around him again and like I say you see Abby Marie in, in close there she's she was going to explode with clear running at all, uh, as well. Look the, uh, the answers are pine pineapple Apple, toast and start and pulled up with, with thumps, heat stress, all sorts of things. So um, I put the poll up, and this is what my poll come up with, the most unluckiest runner. I think there was about a, well, close right. to a 1,000 replies to this. Well, there you go. That just tells you. 26, 27. So the, the general consensus is Mighty Boss may have been the most unlucky runner there. But it's not definitive. It's not at all. as he sees it, to a dollar twenty-two, with more money held on this horse today than we've held in total on any of the previous two races. That's how confident they are of taking the shorts about this. They think this is an absolute gift 
I don't know. Ah, Limbo Soul second pick, 9.50. Acumes at 12. Zazi Bars at 16. Sure, and the three-year-olds are on their way. Should have been missed the start. And Diamond Tathagata jump well. She will range very prominent on the rails. In fact, she's going to take the lead. She will reign from Diamond Tathagata. Both Limbo Soul and Acume not competing for the lead. Then came Zanzi Bar and should have been what should have been the last one coming to the turn at the 500 metres. And she will reign held together from Diamond Tathagata. Then Limbo Soul being felt for Acume the outside. Zazi Bar's five off the lead and should have been last. Mellum's coming to the wider part of the track on She Will Reign. He hasn't really pushed the button as yet. She's two lengths clear from Acume. Going up the inside as Limbo Soul and then Zazi Bar inside the 175. And She Will Reign nicely clear from Acume holding a clear second. But She Will Reign, the princess of Warwick Farm, will win the English spread. She Will Reign by a length on the line to Acume. Limbo Soul, I think third, just in front of Zazi Bar. Good margin back to Diamond Tathagata and should have been was the last to finish. Well, she's done enough today. She's done enough to win the better part of a quarter of a million dollars in the English sprint. I'm sure Gary Portelli's going to be happy with what he saw. He's got that run out of the road. A nice way to start, Duff, her autumn campaign. Yeah, I think you said it all. Did enough. She did enough. You know, she was softened up there. She will reign was left as the the dominant favourite, Duff, and they backed her. They they were backing her at a dollar thirty all the way in. Yeah, they backed her like there was no settling. Look, she got the job done. I, I, I don't want to be Santa Claus here. Look, if you want to reprice this race, she, she's not a fours on chance. Uh, I concede she may have been softened up a little bit here by Diamond Tathagata. Uh, she was a bit of a sitting shot here. I got a little bit nervous for a stride or two there. But look, she rallied. She got the job done. She did it both ends. She might be a better chaser. Uh, uh, Acume was very good. Uh, first up, maybe an improver. Uh, Remember pre-race he spoke to you and he said that she had a little bit of a sprained ankle leading yeah. into this run. He was meant to give her a gallop on the Saturday and on the Friday she, uh, a gallop sorry, in between races and on the Friday she had a little bit of filling mm. in her joint so he didn't want to risk galloping her and iced her, has trod and canted her for the, the past week and then got up to Saturday, last Saturday and gave her a gallop and he feels that she was just a little bit underdone. He felt that after after prep. So he says that he feels she needs to improve into the Oakley plate, but there's plenty of improvement to come. It's not as if she was ready to go. She had excuses. Mm. So when you look back in hindsight, that win was actually very good. Okay. I'll cop the tip. I don't know whether I want to back her on an Oakley plate, though, but um, there's. Uh, he's, he's very raw. He's, he, he needs urging. There's a couple of little things that you have to you have to squeeze out of him. It's, um, but he's, he's a very talented horse, and he has an action to, to back that up. And the features, Aquas Farm, Eskimo Prince Stakes, 1,200 metres. And our mounting yard is brought to you by Harvey Norman. Shop with confidence if you need. More on that in a sec. Yarra Valley's gone to Sky Racing 2. Take note. Channel 527 with them running late there again. Yeah, Brave Song was 4.40 out to 5 at last check. Just back into $4.80. Horses. Nowhere near it. So, uh, the worst result for Tab is Kementari. And maybe... Prince Stakes and we're all set. Stand by for a break. They're off and racing. Assimilates missed the start, uh, resuming and see to Quebec and single bullet have quickly jumped into stride with another sin going fast along the rails. And another sin will head off single bullet, see to Quebec and Lord Cecil improving. A couple further back to Kevin Tari from Goodfellow, Brave Song and Assimilate is the last one. So another sin heads them up in the group three by three quarters to single bullet. Racing keenly with the blinkers on. Lord Cecil goes to third. Kevin Tari's holding position, one off the fence. Makes a siege of Quebec. Start his run now, a fair way from home. They're followed by Goodfellow, Brave Song, making the runs together at the 600. And Assimilate sits back at the rear. It's another sin in front, racing to the turn from single bullet. And on the outside, siege of Quebec. Three of them across the track. On the inside, another sin being joined by siege of Quebec. Single bullet between them, trying to rally. And Kemantari's now slipping off heels into the straight now. Siege of Quebec takes the front. Kemantari's giving chase. So is Brave Song and Assimilate to the outside. The siege could be over. Kemantari heads it off and burst clear. Kemantari. Brave Song assimilate making ground but Kemantari's off and gone to the Eskimo Prince. Siege of Quebec held second. Brave Song third. Followed by Lord Cecil and assimilate wide out. Further back to Goodfella. Good margin back to another sin and single bullet with the last to finish in the race.
A good cult, a good cult. I'd like to replay form line from Thursday night and Ron Duffy's comments because that is exactly how it panned out. He'd out sprint them, he'd be too good for them, he'd put them away. And Duff, that was just too easy, but you expected it. Yeah, that's how, well, that's how I read it anyway. They'd one trial, nice and fresh, good cult. Um, and I'm not saying the second horse is not a good horse, but he wants 1,400 now. And he was always under pressure there. Travel beautifully and I love the way he just let rip there that last 50 metres. Brave songs run well and uh, the simulates come. In this early part of the autumn we've seen some beauties. Could he be the best of them? Well, it's easy to get carried away, and I, I don't want to get carried away, and I love this horse because I, I know I've seen a few really good three-year-olds, yep. and we haven't seen a few of them yet come back. Yep. But uh, this was a very good win. You know, like, I thought it was a lovely ride by Glynn because the fence was no good. He drew barrier three. He, he just edged, 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 and found the, the dangers back and then come around him. Everything was absolutely perfect in the run, but he capitalised on it. He's, he, he's always been an exciting horse in his first prep we thought oh this could be anything then he hit a bit of a flat spring where well, maybe we expected too much when he went down for the cool more and was all rush rush but they seem happy enough with him now um obviously the the, the obvious is that everyone wants to go to the round with guineas mm -hmm. and um, it's probably the right move for him um well with uh, and then the doncaster Maybe the Doncaster. You can go around with Guinea's Doncaster. Yeah, maybe, he could, maybe he could go to a Doncaster. And that's not selling the second horse short, CG Quebec. He could come into his own when he gets to a mile as well. It's, I just hope they leave him alone when they step him up in distance. He's been just driven mad, that horse, just to try and get him to travel. But he won't travel. Um, but he's still, he's got talent in his, in his own right. Uh, Brave Song was OK, just probably found out class-wise. But he's still an improving type. I don't think... He's, he's an exciting colt. Uh, he's got a got a extremely bright future. Um, from day one, he's really impressed us in every in everything he's done. And today, uh, the, what really showed today was his class and his acceleration, the way he was able to put away some pretty nice horses. He never really had any worries. He was travelling on the bit and just waiting. It's uh, all about rim ram here. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, earlier today, $21, now nine fifty. Oliver rides for Hayes Dabney. It is a good market move, Marto. Yeah, it's been well found on track as well. Rim run uh, went up at $16 there and it's into nine. Aloysia the favourite, three ninety to four twenty, back to four, back to four twenty. Paris Rock just eases out forty cents to four forty. There's been a nibble for Chicago. And they're racing. Aloysia goes back to the end of the field. Twitchy Frank began quickly straight to the lead from Paris Rock. And they were followed by Neurotic up to third from Caribbean Pearl. They were followed by Chagrin Rimram. A length and a half. Bring Me Roses banishing towards the 1,000 marker by a length and a quarter. Neurotic second and third two lengths away is Paris Rock the rails. Followed by Caribbean Pearl. Two lengths away in the field. Chagrin Rimram. A length and a quarter. Bring Me Roses banish Shakora Aloysia. Anchor bit is last of all. Up towards the corner at the 650. Twitchy Frank leads by a neck approaching the bend from Neurotic inching closer. Two lengths Caribbean Pearl. Paris Rock fourth on the rails. A length away Shagra four or five off the lead from Rimram Bring Me Roses. Then Banish Shakura Aloysia with a bit to do followed by Anchor Bid. Twitchy Frank at the 400 metres leads a length Neurotic. They were followed by Paris Rock into the clear. Rimram on the fence. Bring Me Roses down the outside. Banish looks to run on. Shakura out wide. Wider. Twitchy Frank at the clock tower leads, but getting a little bit weary. Paris Rock in hot pursuit, and Rimram's got out as well. Rimram in the centre moves up at the 100, takes the lead from Paris Rock. Bring Me Roses, Shakura. Rimram is holding on. Rimram on the vanity from Bring Me Roses, Shakura, then Paris Rock. Next, Aloysia doing a bit late, followed by Shagra, Caribbean Pearl, Twitchy Frank, Banish Anchor Bid, and towards the end was Neurotic. Rimram. For Damien Oliver, well, the money was spot on, was 16 into 8, and just before the jump into 7.5 on VOPs, 7.40 on the tote. Rimram, number five for Damien Oliver, who won this race back in 1999 with Rosa War. Second victory in the race, joining uh, McAvoy and Dunn with that honour. Bring Me Rosa's second, number two.
Luke Curry for Tony McAvoy and Shakora, who was rocketing home. Karen McAvoy. Paid a lot of money for him uh, as a yearling and he's developed into a really nice horse. He's not big, but he's really well put together and he's got a terrific attitude. This is a horse that's uh, travelled over to New Zealand, seen Flemington for the first time and he wandered around the mounting yard like he's been here a few times. Thanks for that, Jane. All right, Hutch, give us your top four for the CS Haystakes. I could probably give eight in this race and still not find the winner. It's that kind of race, but look, I think you need a price. You're getting that with Sully. He's going to get a lot better over further, but I... Jane Anderson with grunts and Nick... A peaceful state remains the solid favourite at $4.60. Has been well backed throughout the day so far and is your market leader. Uh, some others to touch on. Cliff's Edge certainly got admirers at $6. Grunt at $7.50 had support late in the piece. Embellish the... For Dean Lester, 13, 16, 1 and 12, suggests Dean. Last year, this race was taken out by Hay Dock, beating Malays and Land of Plenty. Other winners include Tavachi. All clear given. And they're racing a beautiful line as well. Suncrest goes back to third last with Vinland and Passaro. Scarecrow out quickly. Will lead South Sow and Cliff Sedge and Island Missile not far off those from Peaceful State and Embellish. Next in the field settling down is Grunt on the improve out wider from Sully. Suncrest getting up on the inside to midfield now from a clear sunshine. They were followed next in the field by Kentucky Breeze and Moura Keb from Vinland. The inside main stage third to last from Eshterak and Passaro is at the back. South South the leader as they approach the 800 metres by a length and a quarter Scarecrow. Cliff's Edge is third two for the back island missile the outside followed by Embellish the Kiwi on the fence. Grunt is sixth out three deep two lengths. Peaceful State Sunquest on the rails. Then a clear sunshine Sully out deeper from Kentucky Breeze and Murakib then Eshterak. Well back as Vinland main stage and Passaro is last. It's South South into the straight at the 400 metres by a length and a half to Scarecrow and Cliff's Edge the outer. Then Embellish out and Missile grunt up the middle of the track from Sunquest, followed next in the field by Moura Keb and Eshterak is winding up, but Cliff's Edge at the 200 metres takes the lead from Scarecrow. Grunt on the outside, then Sow Sow. It's Cliff's Edge with 100 metres to go. Grunt wearing him down. Cliff's Edge a fighter. Grunt moves up, takes the lead, and it's Grunt. Grunt three quarters, Cliff's Edge. Third in the race, Moura Keb or main stage doing a bit late, then Embellish and Scarecrow and Peaceful State. They were followed next in the field by Vinland from Sao Sao and next Island Missile, Sully in company then with Eshtera, Kentucky Breeze, Sunquest, Passaro and a clear sunshine. Grunt the winner, Damien Oliver, two on the bounce and the two traditional races for the three-year-olds, the Debonair and also the Vanity, Grunt, real up-and-comer. Look him pin the ears back, he's a beautiful horse and has taken it out in the uh, Rupert Lee Colours, win three at start number four, Damien Oliver for Mick Price, who is having a good day. Of course, he won the list. Fifth, number 15, Scarecrow. And sixth was number two, Embellish. The race time, 121.55. 121.55, three quarters of a length by one length. And a massive crowd uh, building around the mounting yard here for the feature sprint race, the 64th running of the Black Caviar Lightning. And, of course, named in honour of the unbeaten Super champion who had 25 from 25 including three editions of this race. Horse number one is Australia's number one sprinter at the moment, the mighty Red Zell. Peter and Paul Snowden trained for a massive group of owners to be ridden here. So I was uh, more interested in having something on Haydock the way that now he's been trained as a sprinter, like the work leading in. And I think at $8.50, I'm happy enough to take that. Red Zell, uh, you know, doesn't need any introduction. It'll be hard to beat $1.75. Short enough for mine. I thought Miss Rock could run a bit of a race fresh and don't want to leave Red Kirk Warrior Lightning. This market update. And what a betting turn it has been with Red Zell still your favourite. $1.80 into $1.70, but now slight ease out to $1.75, but does remain a dominant favourite with Bet365. Some late support here for Red Kirk Warrior. We're seeing 11 now into $9.50. There was good moves for Haydock, 9.50 into 8. Right, please. Set. Gates crash back and they're racing. Formality began quickly towards the inside. Ball of muscle out fast will lead with Super 2 on the outside. Haydock isn't too far away and Red Zell pushing up out deeper. Further back is Rock Magic behind those horses followed by Formality and Sapito is out deeper on the track followed by Miss Rock Terra Vista about third last and at the end of the field Red Kirk Warrior onto the course proper at the 600 metres. Super 2 in the middle in front of Ball of Muscle Haydock. Red Cell they're outside. They were followed by Terra Vista Rock Magic. Miss Rock out deeper on the track is Formality and Sapito from Red Kirk Warrior. 300 metres to go at Super 2 under pressure grabbed by Red Cell. Mac 
Jovoy hasn't moved. Ball of Muscle back to the inside from Haydock and down the outside, Sapito. Red Zell with 150 metres to go, strikes the front. Rock Magic late with Miss Rock, Red Kirk Warrior, but it's Red Zell in front. Red Kirk Warrior's flying home. Red Zell or Red Kirk Warrior, I'm not sure. Photo finish in the lightning, what a thriller. Third photos, Miss Rock Cepedo there with Rock Magic, followed by Haydock, Ball of Muscle, Super 2, Terra Vista and Formality. Red Kirk Warrior will get up on the outside. Red Kirk Warrior, Regan Bayless for Hayes, Hayes and Dabernick has bloused Red Zell right on the mirror. What a thrilling race. Red Kirk Warrior Regan Bayless for Hayes, Hayes and Dabernick has come with a boomer. The gelding by Not Now Cato has won a ball of muscle. Now the run, 56.33, 56.33, which is 0.9 outside of Black Caviar's track record. Four. And you get your second. What a thrill. Oh, how bloody good is this? Um, what an amazing horse this horse has been for me. Um, you know, obviously he had first hit on his back in the new market and he was terrific there and um, then ran him in the, um, brought him in the Bobby Lewis, his second prep and he was great there as well. And um, just, um, just David Hayes and Tom and everyone, they're, they're freak trainers and, you know, they just know. We're at 2,000 metres, he's now the fastest 1,000 metre horse in Australia. Yeah, it's amazing. He ran down the champion and one of the real special straight track horses he's becoming. Um, I, I think he would have been unlucky not to have won. He was badly held up at the back of the field. I just can't wait to read his sectionals. It'll be quite exciting. What do you put that down to, this unbelievable ability to handle the straight course so well? I don't know. He just he seems to really like it. Um, uh, he's a big scopey horse. And, and just all his moons seem to come together when the straight races come on. So a little bit of luck and a little bit of planning. Can you take us through your tactics leading into the race? The, through winning the new market first up, the first horse to do it in 100 years last year. What is your plan ahead? I will be back here in a few weeks in the new market. Uh, he'll probably carry a bit of a fine for this, but I find sprinters can carry weight, and he's a big, strong horse. And uh, I really feel if he got out earlier, he might have won easier. So... Uh, uh, we just got to keep him happy and really fresh. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, he, he's a high talent, and it's incredible to think that his first start in his life, he won a 2,000-metre race at Newmarket in his maiden. So he's running at half his debut distance, which probably has never been done. And he ran down a champion and ran incredible sectionals to do it. So I think Red Zell lost no admirers, and... Uh, uh, like he's going to be hard to beat the new market if we can keep him in this frame of mind. As we have a look at the replay of the... He just got there. He might have been a bit unlucky uh, if he got beat because Formatterly, who had a bad day, got in his way and he was sure Formatterly would take him into the race. David, it's extraordinary when you have a look at his sectionals here. Uh, Red Zell doing everything to win the race and your blokes come home last 800, 41.99, last 600, 31.59, last 421.21, last 200, 10, 60. 64. Red Zell's done everything bar win the race. It just goes to show how exceptionally good your horse is here fresh. That was an unbelievable win. It was just incredible because um, I thought, you know, it was a good margin back to third and by the times Red Zell was crushing the line and our horse nearly did the impossible, didn't he? He was just terrific. When we think about Red Kirk, Warren. Damien Oliver, Miss Rock. Yeah, it was a fantastic run. I just sort of trekked up nicely behind Red Zell and got up to, to sort of... The 400 metre mark gave me a nice kick when I went and obviously just got run down the last bit by a very handy horse. So disappointed to get beaten, but um, start of his campaign and uh, he's in for a great campaign. Quite match the brilliance of Red Kirk Warrior, who is so good down the straight, guys. And as we pick them up, Red Zell's about to go to the front. Red Kirk Warrior, who's getting cover all the way, hooks out wide for Regan Bayless. A uh, lovely ride by Regan as well. He knows this horse so well, and he rides him well down the straight as well. He judged the speed every time he's ridden him. He's been up on the speed with him. He was back last there yesterday. Comes with a beautifully judged ride, and uh, you're right, he's he stamped himself as a, uh, a 
dead set straight track horse. Redzel was was gallant in defeat. He, he may have just got lumbered in front there, uh, 50 uh, 50 metres too soon, and uh, he's better off, you know, darting at the hundred more so than the 150. So I want to make a little excuse for him. And if you go back to the start, he, he just bumped on, he bumped himself on the way out of the barrier. Like, you don't need these little things going wrong in thousand metre races. Uh, look. Of the others that they've, they've battled on markets, the TJ Smith and the Everest. Um, Red Zell and Chautauqua. Minari's in a trial in a couple of weeks, guys. Oh, can't Vega wait for Magic. That. Oh, he's come back. What did you think of Chautauqua's trial? Uh, amazing. I, I was happy to see him, uh, Brenton, let him do a little bit there. Just give him that. Stampede, Global Glamour, and also Endless Drama. Global Glamour's the only one to skim in at this stage on track from 5 into 480. Endless Drama is 4. Hopefully he's still uh, sharp enough for the 1400 metres here, and, and uh, I think he can lay his cards on the table for a pretty big autumn, this horse. I think the dangerous prized icon, all he has to do is be shot. Gates open now, off and racing, stampede, white out jump well, but addictive nature, given a liven up there by Hieronymus, and the three-year-old's going to lead addictive nature from stampede. Going forward is Global Glamour in the early part. She wants to serve it up to the cult. Just behind them, classic uniform and endless drama looking to slip. Doesn't off the lead. 600 metres out, Global Glamour did work early to lead. She's out by three quarters to stampede. Then came addictive nature, leaders back. The further back to Endless Drama, prized icon behind him. Classic uniform stoked up, coming through second last, being ripped up to the outside. Global Glamour comes up the rise, two lengths clear. Endless Drama going after her strongly now. Addictive Nature third and a good gap back to prized icon and coming through. Global Glamour still in front from Endless Drama. Coming through is winding up well. Endless Drama goes to Global Glamour. Coming through and prized icon. Endless Drama hits the lead late and Endless Drama wins the Apollo. Endless drama, wore down a game, Global Glamour. Photo for third, prized icon and coming through. Not far from the winner. Then came Addictive Nature. Several lengths further back to Classic Uniform. Then in Prince and Stampede was last. Well, Chris Waller was always expected to win the Apollo, but it was going to be with Winks. He's done it anyway with Endless Drama, number three. Ty England in the saddle. It was a bit of a slog that last 100 metres or so when Endless Drama loomed up and she wouldn't give in the mere global glamour. And then the other two were starting to come, prized icon and coming through, but he'll get the decision narrowly, but he wins. Endless Drama. Nice horse. Glamour. For Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott and Rachel King, the rider. Now, Number six coming through has run third. He's expected to win the Apollo, but he was expected to win it with Winks. She's not there, but Endless Drama, third in the race last year, gets the money in 2018. Yeah, he's come back a better horse. It's taken him a while. I know he's a six-year-old stallion now, and that's his, uh, his first win in Australia, but she's a lovely-looking horse, this. He's got a beautiful head on him. He's a real stallion. Uh, hopefully, I, I, I did think he was going to blow this field away after sitting in the 1-1 and looming up to a mare that had done a lot of work. Uh, but I still think there's upside and he's a chance of really improving again off this hit out. Boy, oh boy, global glamour. Uh, how gallant in defeat was she? she? She went out that second furlong so, so hard. She's in the worst part of the track. Uh, she's a sitting shot. She fights hard. That's that's a, a, a real gut buster. She, she deserves a, a lot of credit for that performance. Uh, uh, 3, 13, 6 and 2. Heading to the gates for the light fingers. Let's go to Glenn Munsey now for a market update. There should be plenty to tell us here, Glenn. Yeah, Greg, I, I thought this favourite would have kept getting out here. Elise had got to 2.25, but they were quite happy to step in at the 2.25. In fact, in the last uh, three minutes, we've laid one bet of 10000 at 2.20 and another bet of 11000 at $2.15. She's in... Losing great line out, Debonelli, white out, jump well. So did Shamook underneath it. And from within, mastering to go and join these leaders. Elise into stride nicely just behind them from Ellie's encore and then Yulong Zing Shang as the field strings out. Melody Bell gets well back on the orange blinkers on the outside of Kanga's eye. Then from within takes the lead clearly in this from Devon Early and Ellie's encore. Shamook on the outside going to four caught in a three wire position. Elise camp right behind the leaders then came Yulong Zing Shang. Further back to Melody Bell tracking the favourite everywhere she goes. Kanga's eye back on the fence from Torval Sasso Kubaro and Frolica starting to 
attack on into the straight and from within leads from Debanelli. Shamook on the outside going after the leaders and Elise goes back towards the inside. Coming up to the 250, Elise sprints. She sprints quickly, Elise from Shamook in second. Torval and Frolic down the outside. It's Elise in front. Shamook's coming back on the outside. Elise head in front from Shamook. She's finding Elise and Elise wins the light fingers first up. Staved off Shamook and Torval running third. Melody Bell closed off. Frolic sprinted for a bit. Just uh, was found wanting the final 100 metres. Then came Sasso Corbaro from Debanelli. Ellie's encore. Yulong Zingsheng. Further back to Kangazai. Uh, from within, change of tactics, but uh, she didn't see it out. Elise back in the winner's stall for Glenn Schofield. First up at 2.20 and 1.30 for James Cummings. Shamook ran a great race at $1.90. As did the Elise. Yeah, terrific return from her. Just got a little bit hairy on the point of the bend here when a horse whipped around her and she got shoved back in and she had to duck inside runners here. But uh, she's a lovely filly. She's she's on target for, for races like the uh, the Group 1 Surround now and, and the Coolmore Classic. Look, she's, she's just been working progress for so, so long. I'm, I remember as a two-year-old, she she walked in the, into the yard. She she had a, a head as big as an elephant and, and a, a real light frame. But she's finally grown into that big wolf head of hers and uh, turned into a, a lovely big strong filly. Uh, this is a classic case of wide no cover here, Shamook. If you were just looking at that race on Facebook, you'd say, wow, what a performance that. Four deep, three and four deep, no cover, in front, and have the hide to, to, to fight hard to the line like that. But I just feel uh, it comes down to her being in the better ground there. Uh, Torval may have been a touch unlucky for a 100 to 1 chance. She found trouble early in that race and, and I, I thought she's happy to play around the favourite here. He's rock solid at 3.40 Astoria but uh, we take Manhattan is the mover. Okay don't forget if you run second or third you get up to 50. Racing in the Autumn Classic Blue Jay way a touch slow from Barrier 2 goes back towards the end with Mr So and So. Think Positive jumped well with Rel's son and also our deeper armed and ready. Valiant Spirits coming over with Zhang Fei and we take Manhattan, so four or five across the track. Belfast behind those who reach the 550. Valiant Spirit has a few of these off the bit. Two and a half, we take Manhattan. Rels under the outside from Zhang Fei. Then tag reader next. Belfast further back. Think positive. Astoria trying to get moving from 1 1 2 and armed and ready. But Valiant Spirit comes around the turn at the 300. Four or five links in front of we take Manhattan. Zhang Fei tag reader. Belfast Astoria down the outside with Mr. So and so. Valiant Spirit as they reach the 150, still four legs in front of Astoria, then a wall, but Valiant Spirit, what a dashing ride, it's getting tired, but a big win. Valiant Spirit, two lengths Astoria, Mr. So-and-so, Belfast, then tag reader, Relson, next think positive, we take Manhattan from Zhang Fei, further back 112, Blue Jay Way, and then well back was Amanito, and back with it was Armed and Ready. Regan Bayless and Valiant Spirit, a dashing ride. For Daniel Williams at Mornington, the gelding by Dewport has led them a merry dance. Good first up, Miss Wahoo, I think brings in some solid form lines and smart coupe. Uh, another one where uh, you can make a, a... Thank you, Shane. Uh, around that $4.20, just back out to $4.40 for Smart Coupe. So it's sort of just fluctuating a little bit, but it still is the best back run in the race. So punters hoping that the horse jumps well, gets in a good position, uh, and that might be the key for the horse. Seem excited, just back out from $5.50 to 6 and Summer Sham got as far as 7 down to six fifty. Earth Angel, a dollar to... The Angus Armanasco at 1400 at Group 2. They're set and racing immediately. And Summer Sham jumped brilliantly straight to the lead by a couple of lengths. Two in second place, pushing up counter play on the inside of Miss Wahoo as they link onto the course proper. Miss Oklahoma's there, Smart Coupe around her. And Super Snob getting up on the inside to improve her position. Midfield Palazzo Vecchio, 50. Summer Sham takes a steadier three quarters of a length. Smart Coupe, a length and a half. Miss Wahoo, they were followed by super snob and counter play Palazzo Vecchio is sixth on the rails a length away Miss Oklahoma further back is watch me spin and then came Earth Angel see me exceed and Ocean Deep is at the rear 600 out Summer Sham by a length and a quarter to Smart Coupe two lengths away on the outside Miss Wahoo from super snob then counter play further back in the field Palazzo Vecchio Miss Oklahoma watch me spin well back is see me exceed Earth Angel and Ocean Deep into the straight Summer Sham at the 350 in front 
by a length and a quarter. Smart Coupe, Miss Wahoo, counter play on the outside presents. Palazzo Vecchio runs on. So it's Summer Sham below the 200 from Miss Wahoo. Counter play on the outside from Smart Coupe. Summer Sham trying to hold on at the 50. Palazzo Vecchio gets out late, but Summer Sham won again. A nick. Palazzo Vecchio, Miss Wahoo, counter play. Not too many run on here. Then Smart Coupe, see me exceed and super snob. Further back, Earth Angel. Then Ocean Deep, watch me spin and miss Oklahoma. Summer Sham, Daniel Moore's dictated, and, Su and Summer Sham remains unbeaten. Three from three. <laughs> Summer Sham, Daniel Moore for Danny O'Brien from Palazzo Vecchio. Bo Mertens, Mick Price heading towards an Australasian Oaks. Well, what a terrific pipe opener. And I just felt that it had mapped better today with even luck. Uh, I think he could uh, easily bounce back, uh, this uh, talented three-year-old. Uh, Shillelagh, I'm giving another chance to. A brave smash was unlucky last time, and I think showtime, but you know, I've left a couple of... Well, I talked about toes and stardom last time we were looking at the market, and all of a sudden that's got the... Well, that's drifted. That's out to $6 now, toes and stardom. So that was the one that was going in. But we've just uh, reduced our percentages, and you can, as you can see, a Brave Smash has gone out to $4.20 as well. Mighty Boss is the one out of the three there holding. That's always a good sign when the other two are drifting. And Showtime has held... It got down to six fifty, but it's now holding at 7 Mr Sneaky's just snuck along, if I can say that. It's not, not actually a word, but it's at $9.50. And then Lord of the Skies there at... It's set to run. Ready to run. Please. Set at the 1400 metres. Racing. Humidor goes back to third last with Sovereign Nation, Shillelagh. Lord of the Sky jump better today. With on the outside, Brave Smash and Showtime. Brave Smash, Showtime go together from Lord of the Sky and Mr. Sneaky. Two lengths to Mighty Boss Racing Solo. A couple of lengths, Toes and Stardom. They were followed by Snitsun, Sovereign Nation. Three lengths, Windspell, Humidor, Shillelagh is last. To the first turn at the 1,000 marker. Showtime the leader by two lengths to Brave Smash. A length, Mr. Sneaky. A length, Lord of the Sky, Mighty Boss. Three lengths away, Toes and start on the outside of Snitsun. A length and a half, Sovereign Nation. Humidor third to last from Windspell and a couple Shillelagh. So it's showtime the front runner for Dwayne Dunn at the 700. Three quarters, Mr. Sneaky. Brave Smash third, the inside from Lord of the Sky. Mighty Boss around them, three deep. A length and a half to Toes and Stardom who's tracking the boss and then Snitsun. Further back, Sovereign Nation. Humidor in an awkward place from Windspell and Shillelagh. Up around the turn at the 350. The leader showtime from Mr. Sneaky. Brave Smash needs a run. Mighty Boss three deep, Lord of the Sky behind them. Toes and Stardom presents to the outside. Humidor behind it from Sovereign Nation, Lord of the Sky. Mr. Sneaky on the outside of Showtime at the 200. Brave Smash gets the run between them. Toes and Stardom the outer. Brave Smash takes Showtime at the 50. Brave Smash bursts through. Toes and Stardom late. Brave Smash a half length. Toes and Stardom, Showtime two lengths. Humidor four. Followed by Snitch Sun, Mr. Sneaky, Shillelagh, Mighty Boss, Windspell, Lord of the Sky. And Sovereign Nation last in the Maturity. Brave smash, 420 and 180 in the end. Tote favourites and started favourite with bookies after that luckless performance in the CF4. Williams just needed a run at the top of the straight, got it, and he used it. Win four at start 20, and so far his biggest. Brave smash the winner, and Darren Weir wins it two years in a row with Blackheart Bart last year. Brave smash this Any performance in the Everest, but his two runs have been right on the mark, Craig, and another group one for you. I think you're almost reaching near 50 group ones uh, for your career. Yeah, lucky it's group one's not eight, but um, look who's great. Uh, I've got to thank all my team, my family around great feel, so I think they've got plenty of options with him, and that will just give him confidence, but, um, well, he's got serious ability. Leto obviously was good when that horse crossed him and um, was able to get a bit of cover and then he just needed the luck and um, we, we felt we had the horse in the right order, he just needed a bit of luck from the barrier but uh, Craig uh, took the luck out of it obviously. When you first tra had him running in the spring you kept him to the short trips but he's always given the impression that he'd be an, an absolute gun 1400 metre horse. Yeah absolutely and he'll run a mile, you know a mile will be even better so uh, yeah it's, look it's um, you know like to thank Luke and Jamie for obviously picking these horses and picking me to train them obviously and then they get great bunches of people in him to race them and um, obviously is to get his horses perform so well yeah tremendous effort by Darren and his team and I think uh, he would have taken quite a few positives out of this I think kudos to Craig Williams here he uh, took the race by the scruff of the neck Darren was worried where Brave Smash was going to end up in the run got him across found his position put him to sleep just behind the speed but uh, 
great to see Tozum Stardom back uh, yeah. after his indifferent performance here the other day. And uh, Benny Allen, I think, rode Tozum Stardom and got him into lovely rhythm. And uh, he looked the winner at one part. And then Humidor, the horse that gave uh, everyone in Winks a scare in the Cox Plate, was very good late. Uh, thought the three-year-old of uh, Hawks' Showtime, he was very solid for a young horse. Uh, you know, he's done a bit of racing, but uh, taking on these weight-for-age horses for the first time is solid as well. So good racing. Yeah, some good runs in it. Uh, Dwayne Dunn's rated uh, Showtime really well out in front and, and what was a key I suppose was that Williams was able to get in front of Lord of the Sky early and take that horse out of the equation. Uh, interesting uh, manoeuvre to get Mighty bus, uh, Boss up closer but also um, I thought Humidor just for a fleeting stride could have run over the top of them here but uh, uh, too good the winner and uh, just had to get a little bit of luck here didn't it and uh, accelerated, used the gap which was important. Well I think it's uh, been great to watch his progress uh, from when we saw him in the spring. Uh, he was being kept to short trips but he's always given the impression you know 1400 1600 meters he had form in that sort of distant range back in japan so he's been able to break through and that's an important tick next to his name with that pedigree that he's got to get a group one here in australia and no doubt studs will be sniffing around uh, the australian bloodstock boys to, to see what they can do oh, for sure and uh, i think darren in you know, made it after the race, they all go to the blamey, but uh, it might be a lovely Doncaster horse yeah. too. The big, uh, I think it's two and a half million or three million, whatever it is now. The big mile at Randwick might be right up his alley. This horse, he was terrific there in the Everest. In this, in the won the Futurity win yesterday, and it was a stable Quinella and a Quinella to the colours of Australian Bloodstock. Toss and start and running second. Yeah, big race for them. Look, uh, this horse, Brave Smash, different tactics yesterday. I, I can't recall him being in the box seat third, the rail in any races, but he certainly reacted nicely. Uh, he's got that. Everest form, which has shaped up well over the in Melbourne over the last couple of days, with Tulip winning at Mooney Valley. Uh, who's to say that he's not going to be a Doncaster Mile contender? Uh, I thought that was terrific. Toast and Stardom is back on track. I'd like to see him back in Sydney. I, I think he's got him going really well, Darren. Showtime's, I think, is right in this Australian Guineas. Um, he, he's had a couple of nice little toughen up runs now in the right races for that. He, he's looking good for the Guineas, yes. I reckon. Looking very well. He's he's just come out of the ground from yeah. last preparation. He's just improved a, a true Hawks horse that just has improved in time, and and he's got taken a different path than most horses. But he's he's certainly on song. And Numidor was very good as well. First up, making good ground late there. Offer for the Group One Blue Diamond Stakes for the two-year-olds over 1,200 metres. A fantastic betting race and one of the most open Blue Diamonds in recent years. Bet three, six, five markets. There's been a lot of support coming through for numerous runners, but there has been one huge go today, and that is for Written By. This morning it was $11, and now into $6, and is the favourite. Support also for number 13 Ennis Hill, which has been $8.50 to $6.50. Two backed at odds have been number 15 Quafilla, which is $26 into $17, and also number number six encryption which is 21 into $15 so that is the markets courtesy I'll bet to get close it's that kind of race I think but I think Ennis Hill um, I like the fact that she can put herself forward in the race uh, and uh, it looks a great chance Plaguestone should get a nice run tucked in behind I think if a hood can jump uh, also going to run a big race and written by I don't want to leave written by out of case Massive go here for Written By on Bet365. Money has continued. It's now halved its price from this morning and sits at the top of the market at $5.50. Most other runners remain solid with a little luck. go. They're ready. Set to gallop. Ready. Racing in the blue diamond. Quafila a touch slow. Kinky Boom's going back towards the end. Written by began well with Lady Horse Owner and crossing the Abbey. Grand Symphony not far away from Aristocratic Miss. Driving through Plague Stone and Ennis Hill and Prairie Fire on the inside as they settle. After 200 metres, crossing the Abbey on the outside of Grand Symphony. Written by out three deep from Lady Horse Owner, Ennis Hill and Prairie Fire on the inside. They were followed by Plague Stone and Aristocratic Miss. Run none on the fence midfield from more than a Seed Longleaf in a hood, followed by Encryption Kinky Boom in Baha and Quafila last. Crossing the Abbey at the 550, leads three quarters written by Lady Horse Owner up around the outside, three deep from Prairie Fire stalking them. Then Ennis Hill, next Aristocratic Miss, further back in the field, Plague Stone, a hood to the outside, only about four off the lead. It's written by taking the lead at the top of the straight, written by from Lady Horse Owner, Ennis Hill, Prairie Fire back to the inside, in Baha late down the outer, written 
by at the 200 metres, two legs in front, Enbaha charging on the outside, but it's written by, written by for Jordan Childs. What a victory, what a moment for the young man. Three legs, Enbaha, or Hood third for fourth. Prairie fire prominent from encryption. Kafila, aristocratic Miss Lady Horse owner. Ennis Hill, Kiki Boom, followed by more than exceed Grand Symphony. Run down behind those plague stone, crossing the Abbey, and at the end of the field, Longleaf. Written by Jordan Childs. His father, Greg, won the race back in 1992 with Reva Diva. And written by has stormed a victory for trainer Graham Big, the colt by written tycoon out of Yao Chin. Jordan Childs from the outside gate has been far too good for them in the Blue Diamond. Well supported, clear favourite in the end, 5.50 on VOPs from N. Baha, who was right down the outskirts, flashing home. Corey Parrish for Hayes Hayes Davidick and a hood in third, number 16, Luke Curry for Tony McAvoy. Two, 10, 16 and four. Fantastic. The faith that the, the big family have shown in you. He's a quirky horse, but they've stuck solid and nice reward. Yeah, it is. Um, he's been a tricky horse, and special thanks has to go to um, Joey, who rides some track work, and also Snowy behind the gates, and Shane Stockdale as well, and win Group 1s, and to win my first being in Blue Diamond, it's fantastic. Group 1, Geordie. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> This is a very special moment for trainer Graham Begg. Welcome back to the Group 1 winners list. Thank you. It's a bit of a watershed moment, actually. It's a special moment. I know you've spoken long and hard about written by and how much ability you've always felt he had. Look, Shane, he just doesn't know how to lay down. And, you know, I just knew after his first up run, he'd just improve out at leaps and bounds. You know, everyone thought, oh, wide gate. You know, that was a knock on him. But he's just had the best couple of, couple of weeks since the prelude. And his work on Monday morning... So raw, but you were able to keep your composure. What was going through your mind as you turned for home? Uh, I knew I was travelling really well, and once he gave a kick, I was just a bit worried that he was left in front a, a bit early, and I could see out of the corner of my eye that things out wide starting to make some ground, but it was just too strong. He, he's a really tough horse. He's in for the fight, and it's great to be able to do it for Graham, and obviously Neville, he's, um, he's a big part of it. He bred the horse, so nah, it was really fantastic. And it's also been great to see the outpouring of my wide gate, so but he's so quick out of the gates, isn't he? You can see him here, the uh, just going straight to the lead from that wide gate. And although he doesn't find the fence, what you can see from this angle too is that he has a straight line from the barriers to the bend. So if you can go forward and sit through deep, it's not too much an advantage until you get to that point of the turn. When we get to this spot where he is now, BZ, uh, you can see he's sort of got that half bit of cover um, and it's sort of half a beat out of the gates and what Jordan did here was sort of just put a little bit of pressure on those runners back to his inside but still moving forward that he was not cramping them for room. He was then gets into that one-off position and then here once he gets to the top of the straight he says well I've got to this point I'd imagine he's thinking I'll probably count to one, two, three, <laughs> four, five. Well I've got to go now and what, that acceleration he showed from that about 300 metre mark was enough to put the race away. Uhud's run on well again. Um, the Plague second filly, right. Plague Stone's been okay. But at the end of the day, it was just simply all about it written by. He's a, he's, a, he's a bit like Seapoy, isn't he, this one? Uh, he's got explosive gate speed. He kicks off the bend and he just runs pretty strong over all time. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Struck a good track once he won, but he's handled all conditions. Some of his runs have rated really well. A good second to Egyptian symbol last prep. Work's been 16 is she will rain last year's golden slipper winner Ben Millam rides for Gary Portelli and she's at eight dollars fifty on the drift she got the job done on uh, her resuming run this prep on snitzel for Peter and Paul Snow to Mark Zara in the saddle he's on toe a little bit as he makes his way out to the gate Stand unbeaten fresh and should get a lovely run on the race so I think just on you know tracking the speed or ride on speed but Russian Revolution competitive race uh, on paper and as you'd expect for uh, the Oakley plate my number's Snitty Kitty I'm, I'm happy to be with her I think she'll go forward and hopefully absorb a, a real hot 365. It's been an amazing betting race this through Bet365. Nearly all runners remain solid except for the three-year-old filly Booker. She continues to firm and is now at $8. The favourite Russian Revolution hasn't budged from its quote of $4.60. A very open race and punters are not really sure here for the Group 1 Oakley Plate. Ready, set and they're racing. 
sort of light, dipped and missed it. And also going back towards the end is Catchy and Rock and Gold. Beginning quickly, Snitty, Kitty, Prussian, Vixen, Shy Dell. They share the front from Booker. Russian Revolution behind them from Key Lister, illustrious lad on the inside. Next in the field, Flamberge and Glenel from Bonds away. Palazzo Publico the inside from Hellbend and Furick from Rock and Gold. Then Catchy, She Will Reign. Second last, Sword of Light, Lady Esprit is last. 600 out. Snitty, Kitty blazes the trail. Three quarters of a length, Shy Dell. Russian Revolution moves up. Then Prussian Vixen, Key Lister the inside. Bonds away, tracks into it four deep from Flamberge. Niggled at, then Booker. Uh, Booker followed next in the field, then by illustrious lad and rock and gold snitty kitty at the 300 meters in front by a length and a half to russian revolution followed by bonds away booker down the outside and they were followed next in the field by trying to get through now is catchy towards the inner snitty kitty at the 100 russian revolution hell bench driving through they hit the line russian revolution has won it russian revolution from hell bed booker or snitty kitty then bonds away and key lister and hell bent together further back was catchy and they were followed by Sword of Light. Further back, Rock and Gold, Palazzo Publico. Further back in the field, Illustrious Lad with Flamberge. Furick never came on. Towards the end, Shydell, Rock and Gold. She will reign Lady Esprit and Prussian Vixen. Russian Revolution at $4.30 and $2. Mark Zara for Peter and Paul Snowden will take the Oakley Plate. From Hellbent or Booker, it'll be Hellbent or Snitty Kitty's there as well on the inside. Three of them have hit the line for second. And then behind those, Hugh Ellerton and Simon Zara, 2 8 4 18. 2 8 4 18. And fifth goes to number 11. And that was Bonds away. So he has been bought to be. He got Russian Revolution into a fairly prominent position without too much effort early and pretty much controlled it from there. Yeah, there was an element of ease there. Uh, just right behind them, uh, Snitty Kitty as we expected, pushed forwards. Uh, you had uh, just behind them a key list of Prussian Vixen, Chidel, so all the horses we expected to be up there. And Russian Revolution just slid into the race, didn't it, beautifully uh, down the side. Um, and there were some cracking runs in it. Um, I thought the bolter Lady Esprit flashing home at wide ran a good race. Um, but this was just uh, just a classy performance. Pete, it's extraordinary how he's travelled into that race there. He's, uh, once again, you know, he hasn't worried about the barrier. He just kept the horse out of trouble, balanced and happy, and uh, just let him flow into it. And, and it was any horse's race here at the at the furlong pole. Like, there was uh, a handful of them could have won it, but uh, grit and determination, he, he stuck his head out at the right time. He's a winner, this horse, seven from 11. You can't take that away from him. No, you can't. Very, sorry, uh, Sean, to say, very honest, hell bent, and Booker was five wide the trip and still ran on. Do we overplay it, Pete? You know, written by was from an outside stall, and, and obviously Booker was wide there. But when they turn only once at Caulfield, do we tend to overplay? played in the lead up to these races? Yeah, definitely. If you, you're 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 here at Caulfield, as long as the wind's not against, the, the wind behind them there today or no wind, just keep them happy and flowing, momentum mm. around that turn, uh, throw barriers out the window, it just creates a better price. Mm. And we saw it written by twice now, three deep facing the breeze, and you, you, you're obviously a bit nervous. Yeah. You, you'd love to be in, on the fence covering no ground, but I, it's not a big disadvantage at all. Yeah, I was going to say, it was a, you know, for me... Uh, uh, let's have a look at this performance as we pick them up on the home turn, Duff. Yeah, this is a, a plan, a well-laid plan that come off uh, by Team Snowden here with Russian Revolution. Another one, three wide, no cover, but trialled up brilliantly for this. Uh, his future secure as a stallion, being a dual group one winner now. Uh, where does he go now? Does he go and try and win another Galaxy? Do they take him overseas, Royal Ascot? I don't know. Um, he's a horse that uh, you could do anything now, just plan his, his future at start. I'd suggest that's, that'll be the plan with him. Snitty Kitty, that's her go. She she loves to run and just nutted there late. I thought Hellbent was very well set up there yesterday and he just didn't get the luck. He got held up from the 350 to the 200 there and he, you could make a little case to say that he should have won that race. So bad luck for, the, for, for his connections. Booker wide, no cover, very good, but... Too good the winner. He he just had he was wide no cover, but too sharp, far too sharp. Russian Revolution taking out the Oakley Plate. Hartnell, who won the CFL Stakes here two weeks ago. For James Cummings, Godolphin and Craig Williams, Clint, he's been an outstanding galloper for a long period of time, and it's good to see him back in terrific form. Yeah, it was a great win, wasn't it? Uh, covering a bit of ground first, I thought, first up. I mean, he, he got a lovely run through the race, but he was impressive. 
Uh, it was good on the clock. He's, uh, he's going to re easing in the market as Hartnell. Single gaze, pretty steady at the $6 mark. Other runner in single figured odds is Abby Murray at $9 and $10 or better the rest uh, with Harlem. Most of the others are easing in the market, but pretty solid throughout Galo shop is the popular elect. David Hayes. Ready, Hartnell keen to get on with it. Stools are back and they're racing. Hartnell jumped cleanly. Abby Marie's three lengths off the field in the initial part. Harlem towards the inside is the leader. Still a wall across the track is pushing up out wide is Galo Shop. And also Spirit Jim kicking up in the centre with Hartnell three deep. Lord Fandango out even deeper. Single Gaze is pushing up as well to keep them wider. Further back is Jack and Obey. So the leader is Galo Shop as they climb the hill with 1,300 metres to go by a length and a quarter. Second Lord Fandango and third a single gaze. She's going to storm in two and a half to three lengths. Abby Marie shook up. 800 metres out. And it's Galo Shop, the front runner for Zara by a length. Lord Fandango. Single gaze third the inside from Hartnell. Then came Spirit Jim. Fifth the fence from Jack and Obey from Harlem. Next in the field, Ventura Storm. Two lengths. Abby Marie. They approach the turn with about 450 metres to go. It's Galo Shop from Lord Fandango. Now single gaze is pushing out into the clear. Hartnell's coming into it too. We've got a race on our hands. Further back, Spirit Jim and Jack and Obey. Galo Shop into the straight at the 250. Leads by a length and a half single gaze. Hartnell to the outside, but it's Galo Shop pounding the turf. Leads by a length and three quarters, two length single gaze, followed by Hartnell. But Galo Shop is strong to the line, and Galo Shop won it by a length and a quarter single gaze, who chased so hard. Two and a half Hartnell for fourth Ventura Storm with Abby Marie, then Jack and Obey. Spirit Jim Harlem and Lord Fandango. Galo shop Mark Zara for Darren Weir. And Mark having a really good uh, run at the moment. It is Galo shop successful. He looked over at the big screen. He knew he was clear. He's won the last two races, the Oakley Plate, and now the Peter Young. The gelding by Deportivo, win 12. Over two and a half million dollars in prize money now and has just galloped them into the ground. Single Marie, then Jack and Obey, Spirit Jim Harlem and Lord... Yeah, Galo Chop winning the uh, Peter Young Stakes there, the last at Caulfield yesterday. Let's have a look at the market for the Australian Cup and it is favourite over single gaze. Our man and who we saw, uh, the Taj Mahal and Hartnell drops down to $11. Any thoughts there, guys? Yeah, look, there was a few disappointing runners yesterday. Galo Chop has obviously come back better than ever and he's probably deserves to hold Hold his, his place at the top of the market there. Single gaze, what an absolute ripper she is. It all revolves on what Team Williams um, do here. They've got the Dalmandan, the Taj Mahal, that homesman first run in Australia looked impressive there. So if they single one of their horses out for this race, they're, they're live contenders. Hartnell wasn't as good there second up yesterday, was he, than, than what he was first up. So uh, there was a few disappointing runners yesterday. So that Australia... She's second up. She's got that fitness edge over a couple of these other the runners. She's very athletic. She hasn't put a foot wrong in my eye. Mr. Jab keeps firming and while she's not a, an alarming drifter, Sunlight, she's just got out that 10 cents here and there. Yeah, the market's telling me Esther Jab's the one and I'm like, I just can't see enough in it uh, to change my numbers here but at the same time, this is not a race I want to charge in and bet with confidence at the same time. It's another one of these races today that I want to look and learn a little bit as far as the slippers halt. So I'm marking them 4, 7, 1 and 5 I'll stick with this filly sunlight. I know she's got a little improvement to come, but she has got the form on the board. Uh, let, let's not. Nothing else really supported. Sunlight now out to three bucks. Have a look at on track figures in a sec. But Esther Clark takes hold on sunlight, just getting a nice toe into the race third, and they're beaten off Knievel and Gongs coming to the turn. And neutrality the outsider head in front. Esther Jab still on the bridle comes back. Sunlight's peeling off their heels, giving chase, and then came Gongs down to the 300. It's neutrality. Esther Jab and sunlight. Sunlight's chiming in now. Neutrality's run its race. Esther Jab still has gas in the tank. Sunlight, the outside, goes to it. It's Sunlight and Esther Jab. The fillies are ripped clear of the field. Sunlight, the outside of Esther Jab. Sunlight had the better run. She's just in front. And Clark gets her home in the silver slipper. Sunlight wore down a game. Esther Jab, and they finish well clear of the rest. Gong's in third. Then came Neutrality and Knievel.
If you're a Sydney racing fan, you better go, get, be, start to be excited about this golden slipper because that silver slipper has delivered something special. The golden slipper's to come. And we've got more great racing, more great two-year-olds. But what we just saw, Duff, were two outstanding fillies in a war down the straight. Sure, Sunlight had the better run after Esther Jarb was taken rest. Uh, you said it. Two outstanding fillies. Look at the gap. Where are they? Where's the rest of them? There's there they are, and that's an unbeaten filly in third spot there, or a previously unbeaten filly. Uh, look, I... what do you think of that? That was incredible, wasn't it? Um... A lot of talk um, in the hours subsequent to the race. Of, as we stop it here, you can see Esther Jarb has been able to find the lead. You've got Sunlight in second. And then Blake Shin here on the runner from the Snowden team. He's caught wide in this small field, and he elects to press on and put the pressure on Esther Jarb. Tim Clark on Sunlight goes, well, thank you very much. I'll just come out of this little bit of a speed battle here. And Brent Navdala could have let B. Shin go if he wanted to, but he allowed to then kick up and hold the fence on Esther Jarb. And she just looks like she's had to do that half length too much to work. two lengths, so one to two lengths extra bit of work there, which has no doubt taken away from her brilliance at the finish. To be fair to Brenton as well, the rail's out six metres at Rose Hill today, which typically favours on-speed horses nearer the rail. He's on a filly that's had the, a more recent run than Sunlight, and therefore I think probably uh, he felt like he had a slight fitness edge, so he didn't want to be dictated to by Sunlight and Tim Clark, and he, unfortunately uh, just the way things unfolded there in the early doors uh, meant that Sunlight had the drop. Well, I think these are two pretty good fillies, though. You have to say oh, that. Obviously, Sunlight, yeah, her class is obvious, given her win in the Magic Millions, and a good training performance from Tony McAvoy to be able to get her from the Gold Coast back to um, South Australia, yeah. up to Sydney. She'll stay there now at the top of the market, along with Esther Jarb, and there we see written by at $6. So, um, the best two-year-olds starting to come to the um, top of the market, as they often do, and uh, his Jab, who was brilliant on debut, and we got them together yesterday, and we weren't disappointed with the clash. Oh, no, we were not. It was game on in this race here, and here she comes. She just sat behind them here, relaxed beautifully. She's got a lovely racing brain, this sunlight. She, she just does uh, everything perfectly right. Gets the right run, finishes off. I think there's more fitness to come. than She's probably six weeks between runs here, and uh, she must have done well, because Tony's saying another run the week before the slipper. Esti Jab. Lost no admirers here. They run very fast time in this race, and I, I feel it's a funny one to say. Oh, you know, she went out too hard and she got attacked. I'm wondering whether she asked to be attacked. Her, she, her greatest asset is the way she pings the lids and jumps a length in front. If, if, if you just watch how she jumps, and and I think Brenton sort of said, I'm going to. Well, I've bluffed Sunlight out of the lead. Um, and I thought maybe he just dropped the anchor a little bit quick and asked for trouble. There he is there. That's all great. Very hard. They run really good overall time. Uh, this is the fastest silver slipper for a long time. Um, and I look look at the margin they've put into the third horse there. That 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 is golden slipper form, believe me. And the fact that Sunlight had um, Esther Jarb and Sunlight, whereas he's going to possibly not have that tactical speed to be able to sit as close as they are. It'll be interesting in the next three weeks where we've got a Colts race and a Phillies race for the next three weeks to compare the times if the Phillies got the edge on the Colts or the Colts have got the edge on the Phillies uh, earlier in the season I think it, you know the they, they are all beautiful animals they are and that's what you expect at this level Greg I, I'm going to have to say I go I'm going with Pierre Arter just because I think he's he's just that little bit more forward he's going to get a lovely run on speed so I'm going with Pierre Arter there's nothing I had to bring a little bit of form into this race because there was nothing Steph Thornton and the second last race in gloomy conditions, light on. Race seven from Yarra Valley. Gets the right run here, Kementari. Looks a bit sticky for him on the map. Uh, and that's all you're gambling on here. Uh, his acceleration will take him a long way at 1,400 metres here. Uh, trapeze artist, um, he's got a map beautifully behind uh, potentially siege of, siege of Quebec here. And money at odds for a simulate number eight, $31 into $20. Here, Pierrata firms up late, some big bets for it too. $6 into four sixty now, so uh, a good... Dollars, Pierrata brass. It's Hobartville stakes here at Rose. Hill Gardens. The group two level, the Hobartville Stakes, and the field is in readiness now. We're set for a dispatch. Gates open now. They're off and racing. Kementari's going forward in the early stages. 
trapeze artist is there with Kemen Tari. Ace High is pretty handy, followed by Brave Song. Siege of Quebec is caught very deep but trying to push forward on the outside of Pirata. They're followed then by Lord Cecil Dargento Capital Gain. The last to assimilate and Lava Lava. So trapeze artist in front and Schofield's got the favourite. Kemen Tari right up on the speed in second. Siege of Quebec slowly mustering. Going to third in a three wide position on the outside of Ace High and Brave Song. Parada's back midfield. Two further back to Lord Cecil. Then the Grey Dargento. Capital gain in a three wide position. Then Lava Lover and Assimilate last ten off the lead. It's Trapeze Artist on top with a favourite Kemantari breathing down his neck at the 600. Siege of Quebec has been roused along in third. Then Ace High from Brave Song. And now Parada's being revved up giving chase to the leaders. On the turn Trapeze Artist. Clark is swinging off it at the moment from Kemantari the outside. Then Siege of Quebec from Ace High. Brave Song and Parada to the outside. Kemantari's getting serious now. He lays it down to Trapeze Artist. Parada's going to third. A hundred out. Kemantari draws clear from Trapeze Artist. Then came Parada and Dargeno late but Kemantari. Great ride by Schofield on the speed and Kemantari wins the Hobart Field. Photo for the miners, Pirata and Dargetto. Trapeze artist home in fourth. Further back to Ace High. Then came Lover Lover making ground from Brave Song. Capital gain. Siege of Quebec worked overtime from Assimilate and Lord Cecil was last in. Kemantari keeps on winning the Eskimo Prince at Warwick Farm and now the Hobartville at Rose Hill Gardens sitting up on the speed and clearing away from this quality lineup. He's favourite for the Doncaster, he'll be favourite for the Ranwick Guineas and a bit to dissect there with horses behind Kemantari but today he is the one duff. Uh, yeah, he rode, he rode his horse, he didn't ride the map, he just rode him absolutely perfectly when uh, CJ Quebec didn't and he put them to bed there at the 150 there. Uh, these second and third horses, they'll lose no admirers uh, going to the mile there. Dargento, Pirata, uh, they both uh, hit the line very, very nicely. Pirata's held on to second spot there uh, ahead of Dargento. Well, not, well, just let him, you know, jump cleanly out of the gates and just roll and see where it all worked out. But I think if you went out there indecisive, we're hoping that you were going to get in, well, you wouldn't have got in so it was either one or the other what do you think about towards this race but so were so many other very good two-year-olds duff uh, three-year-olds oh definitely and then look a very smart ride who, who glenn schofield you know his experience really come to the fore here um, he jumped well he got outside the lead here um, no one expected that the map obviously had uh, siege of quebec leading here but he he just rode his horse how it was traveling in this race and he had the better turn of speed and away he goes. Look, Pirata lost no admirers, running on strongly there at the finish with Dargento who really looks a mile 2,000 metre horse. Uh, Trapeze Artist is probably his second up form is not as good as his third up form so we could be a little bit forgiving for him and the two stayers, well the Colt Mace High, well he's just uh, looks to be low flying and the Philly Lover Lover, uh, I thought that was a fantastic uh, return from her Lizzie. I think the, the key that we need to talk about is possibly that there was Kementari went forward instead of we thought he was probably going to go back so we thought he was a little bit vulnerable in betting wasn't he we thought he might not be able to get across but that was the tactics that won the race I think oh no doubt no doubt um Getting to a mile, what, what you're feeling with, with the winner? Well, he's a very adaptable horse, but he's so brilliant over those shorter trips, the 1,200 and the 1,400, that maybe he is not going to be as effective over the mile, but he's everything they've thrown at him, he's been able to jump over. And I think this preparation, you can see that he has come back a little bit better, and we've always... We'll see how delighted with their horses they are. And I also spoke to Greg Hickman after the race, and he was delighted with Pirata. Uh, he's expecting Pirata to really be suited by a mile and he's heading towards the Rose Hill, uh, the uh, Ramwick Guineas of course. So let's go and here we get for the Ramwick Guineas. That's the market we're interested in but uh, that will come a little bit later. So is he a genuine six dollar favourite for Doncaster Kementari? Uh, not at this stage. If he, if he ticks off the box, uh, at the mile box in the, in the round with Guineas, probably. Brave Smash laid his cards on the table yesterday. This is a big improver, this Dargento. Happy Clappers, Clappers, you know, tried and proven. And, uh, you know, that's we haven't even spoke about Elise yet, who's um, already a big mile Group 1 winner at Randwick. So that's shaping up very, very nicely, that uh, Doncaster mile. 
is a big chance. Been in the CSAs and main stage is capable as well. And, and BZ, I've left out another three or four. You can make a really good case. Well, it's that sort of edition of the Australian Guineas this year. Shane Anderson is with the 15 Aloysia. Nick Ashman with the 11 Grunt, along with Ben Ascari. And Matty Hill is with Aloysia. And still a very solid market with no significant moves. Cliff's Edge still heads the market now, currently at $4.40. Grunt hasn't moved from uh, $6, now into $5.50, so there is that support there. Uh, but uh, he has been rock solid all the way through. Aloysia remains at uh, third pick, but on the drift now out. Set to go. Gates are back and they're racing in the guineas. Mighty Boss towards the inside away fairly. Black Sail out well with addictive nature who's forcing forward and from the deep Lavendi. Bring Me Rose is just behind those horses. Cliff Sedge is pushing forward as well and Grunt is moving forward in a hurry. So as they reach the 1300, addictive nature joined and headed by Cliff Sedge from Lavendi. Black Sail fourth on the outside of Bring Me Rose as Grunt's going to slot in on the outside of Embellish from Peaceful State. Two further back is Villamont. Mighty Boss, Salsa more than main stage. Murakeb, Aloysia, Holy Snow. Mr. So-and-so is last of all at the 1,000 metres. Cliff Sedge is the leader. By a length and a half, Lavendi. Three lengths, Addictive Nature. A length away is Black Sail, the outside, followed by Bring Me Roses. Further back is Grunt, about eight off the lead from Embellish, Peaceful State, Mighty Boss. And next in the field is Villamont from Salsa Moor. Well back is Murakeb and main stage. And then came Aloysia, Holy Snow. And Mr. So-and-so is last around the corner. 500 metres to go in the $1 million Australian guineas and it's Cliff Sedge in front by about three legs around the turn from in second place Bring Me Roses who rails through followed by Addictive Nature Grunt to the outside from Peaceful State Main Stage Villamont into the clear Cliff Sedge at the 300 metres two and a half Bring Me Roses they're getting closer Grunt Peaceful State and Villamont down the outside Cliff Sedge at the 150 Grunt Bring Me Roses and Peaceful State Grunt lifts in the middle of the 50 Peaceful State going with it. Grunt and Nick Peaceful State. Grunt fights. It's a trier. It's a winner. Grunt wins it from Peaceful State. Bring me Roses. Villabon followed by Holy Snow. Moura Kip sells some more embellished main stage. Cliff Sedge got the stitch. Followed by Addictive Nature. Black Sail Aloysia didn't come on. Mighty Boss, Mr. So-and-so. And Lavendi a long last. Grunt has won the Australian Guineas. Mick Price and Damien Oliver came into the race winning it twice before. And that's now three for Mick Price after Light Fantastic and Heart of Dreams in 08 and 09. And three for Damien Oliver after Flying Spur in 96 and Mr Murphy in 2001. Just got a lovely run in transit and presented at the right time. Had Peaceful State as a real threat and they fought out. Oh, look, we just had a lovely run and... And when I pulled him out and um, asked him for the effort, that peaceful state is a good horse, came to him and he's too strong for him. He fought him off well. He's, he's just a magnificent specimen of a horse and uh, he deserved a, a really strong group one like that today. We were joking before, have we worked out how many group one winners you've ridden? Or it just doesn't matter, it's another one on the pile. Yeah, as I said to you before, Dino, who beeping cares? <laughs> won that one, that's the main thing. Well done, mate. Yeah, it's great. Thanks, mate. Had a, a big opinion of Grunt. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, look, it was a good job to sort of have to use a bit of horse early. The race worked out good for us. Uh, I thought uh, that the leaders had to sort of pull up. I, I did think uh, a little bit concerned, but when you look at the sectionals and how they rolled along, I thought he was in a good spot, but he still had to tough it out. Um, you know, uh, how he won is the horse he is. He's just a beautiful, big Flemington horse with a really good set of lungs on him. What's the road ahead for him now? Yeah, look, um, the only race I would go forward to is probably the Rose Hill Guineas over 2,000 metres, but I'm mindful that uh, he's going to be a really, really good four-year-old. Um, it wouldn't worry me if I had to put him out. His, his job is sort of done, you know. Uh, use a little bit of petrol on him, and he, he's not light, but he's not furnished yet, you know. And he just, uh, I don't know if he's got a trip to Sydney in him or not, but the only other race I'd go to is uh, probably the Rose Hill Guineas from here. How does he measure up to your previous winners of this race in uh, Heart of Dreams and Life Fantastic? The other two were 1,600 metre horses. Um, you know, they were both good horses on the day. Uh, this horse has got 2,000 metres in him, no question. He's probably got a mile and a half. He might even have two miles in him, I'm not sure. But uh, he's, he's just a big, clean-winded, uh, really good colt. Congratulations, Mick. Clinton, the... Uh...
Group 1 Australian Guineas. Uh, lightly raced grunt, four starts, three wins. Now has a Group 1 on the CV, uh, Duff uh, Grunt. Yeah, looks a good horse, doesn't he? Well, he's five starts, four wins now, including a Group 1 here. So um, is there a race for him in Sydney, the Rose Hill Guineas, maybe? He's a really progressive horse. They're, they're talking him up. What a ride. What a ride. He um, he drew 17. Uh, he, he got across one off, you know, closer than midfield, and the experience of Oliver uh, was really to the fore there. It looks a strong stayer, this second horse. Uh, peaceful state. And that's a very encouraging run from Tony McAvoy's filly, Bring Me the Rose. Roses, bring me roses because she's very early in a preparation. So I'm, I'm saying the eyes are there for Sydney with her. She um, uh, she, she ran a terrific little race and she's been a filly that uh, they've always had a uh, a wrap on. A um, few suspensions there. Yes, there was. Regan. OK, big one in New Zealand yesterday as well, the uh, New Zealand derby, and uh, it will have ramifications on our derby when we get to uh, the championships. Uh, Murray Baker and Andrew Forsman, Forsman, uh, Forsman uh, over the period of Murray's career, both sides of the Tasman, he's trained eight derby winners, Murray Baker. He wasn't in New Zealand yesterday. He was in Sydney to see Winks. Here's the derby. ...getting out many chances at the 100. Endowment for the dance, Mongolian conqueror. Mongolian conqueror, Vinda Dance kicks on the inside. These are the two. Vinda Dance, Mongolian conqueror. They hit it. I think Vinda Dance for Mongolian conqueror in the derby. Yeah, it looks, in a, it looks a strong typical. We've got to respect the New Zealand staying form. He was fourth up, so a sense of timing. I think there's intent to uh, to bring him to Sydney here for the for the derby. I see another firmer there was the f uh, in the in our derby is a horse called the Mayor, uh, who was was pretty good there, laid out wide. But uh, interesting with that Murray Baker story. You know, he had a, a leading chance. Yeah, a lot of talent involved there. He's a recent trial winner at Rose Hill, flashed up late. Irish betters next pick and uh, Zusain, 400,000. That's the one he fetched a fair amount of money and he can gallop. He's one for one, though. Yeah, well, Zusain is the one that... The gate's open now. They're off and racing and uh, jumping OK wide out Zusain. It's going to take the early lead. Legend of Condor being restrained and Santos, the favourite, is pulling its way to second. Uh, followed pretty handy on the fence by San Bar. By three quarters to the short price favourite Santos on the outside followed by San Bar, Oxford Tycoon and Legend of Condor just drifting back a bit from Irish Bet and Spinners the last one, Zusain leads at the 6.50, a half in front from Santos, then Oxford Tycoon San Bar, Legend of Condor's the outside, further back to spin tucked away on the inside of Irish Bet it's a compact field in the skyline Zusain swings in front from Santos in second, then Oxford Tycoon San Bar, Legend of Condor spin in slightly restricted Room and Irish bet still last. Clark goes for home now on Santos. He's trying to beat off Zusain. He hasn't quickened as yet. Santos. Legend of Condor sticks on and spins getting up the fence. It's Santos in front of Legend of Condor. Then came Spin. Santos under the pump. He's still in front. And Santos. He's cooking with gas for the slipper. Santos just held out. Spin and Legend of Condor, followed by Zusain. Then Oxford Tycoon San Bar. And last of all was Irish bet. Well, he's got a bit of killer instinct about him, Santos. He dug in for the fight there. They were coming at him left and right, but he kept lifting, Santos, looking very, very vulnerable many times down that home running, but he's lifted to win. Santos wins the skyline. We'll check what price he is in a Ramwick for the Sweet Embrace Stakes. We've seen the Colts go around. Santos winning the skyline. The Phillies' chances now heading towards the Golden Slipper, 1,200 metres. Well, Santos cast a plate. They're off and racing, and Adamina began very sharply down towards the inside into the abyss, wide out, and Set Sooner all fast into stride. So Set Sooner just leads from into the abyss, and Adamina, perfect pitch, and Casadeva's driving forward on the fence, then Sutton Slipper. Wider out is Fiesta, Kuvalis firing up, Sea Brooks planted deep on the outside of Sweet Ava. Then came Now or Never, and three lengths out the back, two for two. They've got 7.50 to run, and Set Sooner makes the running from into the abyss. They're followed then by Adamina on the 
the outside of Casa Diva. Further back on the inside to Saturn Slipper. Perfect pitch and Fiesta without cover. And McAvoy just sending the filly forward coming to the turn. Seabrook behind her. And then came Sweet Ava around the turn. It's uh, set sooner in front from into the abyss. They're followed by Adamina pulling out. Casa Diva goes back towards the rails. Then came Fiesta and Seabrook to the outside. Set sooner being tackled now by into the abyss. Fiesta's closing in. So Seabrook on the outside. It's Fiesta going up to set sooner. Seabrook the outside. It's Fiesta and Seabrook fighting it out. Fiesta and Seabrook. Seabrook's driving home best and Bowman gets the victory in home. Seabrook wore down Fiesta into the abyss running third followed by set sooner. Then perfect pitch from Sweet Ava. Further back to Adamina for two with Mida Headway. Then came Coover Lee from now or never. Saturn Slipper and Casa Diva was one of the last to finish. Well, Seabrook bursts into slipper calculations. A Victorian filly, two runs down south, arrives here for the sweet embrace, and down the outside comes Seabrook. Huey Bowman, never on the track, Duff. I know they go to one turn, but never on the track. I think might have had half cover on the back of Fiesta at one stage, and Fiesta's run second into the abyss up on the pace. The question has to be asked, was he as impressive as last time? Probably not. Um, but, you know, he's a little slow into stride. He had to be ridden aggressively to get up outside the lead. When it got into a fight, he did fight. And, like I said, a job done, but uh, he has to lift on this performance to win a slipper. It's a hard race to read because you've got six horses crossing the line with, uh, you know, uh, just over a length covering the whole lot of them. I thought spin was very good, having to duck back onto in, into the inside, uh, which is, like I keep saying, I don't think it was the place to be. Um, of the others there, Legend of Condor was much better uh, than he was first up. Uh, Sandbar was, was... Rarely comes to Sydney. When he does, beware. Yeah, definitely. He places, he places his horses beautifully. He had a day out yesterday. Uh, this filly, wide, no cover. Um, I don't know whether that was too much of an inconvenience considering the circumstances on the day, but uh, look, I think she has to be respected in the slipper considering how strong she was uh, going over the line here. Uh, she was only second up after being unlucky first up. It may, who, who knows, this could well be a blessing that she, she missed a run um, in the Blue Diamond because she sets herself up beautifully with timing here uh, for a golden slipper with a, with a lead up win under a belt. A little fiestas, uh, what you see is what you get she, she she's talented and she she fought to the line hard there into the abyss did a good job uh couldn't say much about the others i thought sweet aria was pretty good there's a little bit of specking for it and i, I thought her performance was top, quite nicely poking through there late but uh, i'd suggest all honors with the winner there lizzie yeah all honors with the slipper all written all over 51 into 15 for the slipper, Seabrook. Uh, we will get to see uh, Sunlight the week before the Golden Slipper. Uh, performer runs next week. Santos straight into the slipper. It's $4.60 Sunlight. Let's go to the guy, Walter. It's 85000 And McIntosh lobs as your best value bet of the day, Tone. Yeah, thought so, Marto. We'll make it our best value. Uh, we saw it uh, trial with Winx recently, of course. It set the speed in that um, Chris Waller barrier trial. Stand by for a break. Gates open, they're off and racing, and Oxford Poet jumped away well. So do the favourite, Care to Think, is swiftly into stride. And our Beetson's being shoved along on the inside to go and join and head those leaders in the early stages. So it's Oxford Poet and our Beetson stride for stride, and McIntosh rolls to third. In advance of Boss Lane, then Burning Passion and Care to Think being eased back a bit now. Jeff Lloyd is lawless. Oxford Poet in front. McIntosh moves up on the outside to second now from our Beetson, and Care to Think's been caught deep from the start. In front of Boss Lane, Artley tracks up behind the favourite. Then came Burning Passion further back to Burrowdoo and Crack Me Up heads the rest. Into the straight, Oxford Poet leads by length on McIntosh with Care to Think moving up boldly on the outside. Artley trying to go with it and further back to Burning Passion as Care to Think, the favourite, hits the lead now. Going down to the 200, Care to Think in front. Burning Passion's getting a run on the inside of it and now coming home well is Crack Me Up. The Villiers winner putting in big strides. Crack Me Up, move up, takes the lead and Crack Me Up goes on to beat Care to Think. Burning Passion third and Egg Tart, a very encouraging fourth. Good margin back to the rest. Uh, Oxford Poet then into Locketer from Burrow Du Art Lee. Further back to our beats and McCreary McIntosh dropped off and Boss Lane was one of the last to finish. 
Well, Crack Me Up has been in the news uh, all week. There's been a quick stable change from Liam Birchley, who was uh, refused nomination scene of Crack Me Up's crime, winning the Villiers Stakes. He's won a Liverpool City Cup. We know this horse is exempt from ballot in the Doncaster, having won the Villiers, and he's put in a trip. She's back. She's finished off really, really strongly there, and she'll improve off that hit out. Crack me up, care to think, burning passion, egg tart, Oxford poet. He just, he, he beat them, more or less going easy. He, he could well be a Doncaster horse, who knows? He's only had two runs at Ramwick for a Villiers win and, and resumes there in, in fantastic style, I would have thought. Uh, care to think, now, I think well, I read overnight that they're going to freshen him up and, and go for the Stradbroke, and I think that's a very, very wise decision. Uh, anyway, I thought burning passion was good. Great return from Egg Tart. I think she's back. I think she's back. I, I, I want to follow her um, coming in. Seven. We're about half an hour away from Winx's return at a dollar and eighty. A dollar. Wouldn't you love that? A dollar <laughs> eight to one ten on the tote and double figures for the rest. Though. Yep. And that, that's nothing much. That market just reflects everything. Uh, there has been a little nibble around for classic uniform in the Winx out market, which we'll have a look at. Uh, but priced icon there at fifteen bucks. But I guess it's just a matter of how far. Will she win by? On air, prized icon. Yeah, and the money's come for classic uniform here, so Brass... And uh, she has made her way into the theatre of the horse. The mighty Winx is here, ready to go yet again. The kids have got their flag. Huey just yet. He's on his way from the middle of the theatre, a horse where they, they gather to leg, leg up. As... Uh, I wouldn't have changed anything with her preparation and wouldn't have changed anything in her life. So uh, the, the great story continues and... Look, we don't come to the right beer. Yeah, something for the thrill seekers, Glenn. All is in readiness. She's at the gates, along with her rivals. A dollar in land. This is the Group 1 tab chipping Norton Stakes. We're set. We're racing. Winks was the last out of the gates. About three off the lead. Stampede and Jemadar the first to enter stride, but Stampede has come out like a bull out of a gate and will leap clearly from Jemadar in classic uniform third. Prized Ike on a handy fourth, followed by Vinland, who's pretty keen in the early stages around who shot the barm and Libra. And Winks is back second last, and Lasquetti Spirit is five lengths out the back. It's Stampede, an uncontested leader, out by a length and a half to Jemadar. Classic uniform third. Then came Prized Icon, well positioned by Schofield. There followed them by Libran on the inside of the Colt Finland. Further back to Who Shot the Barman. The champ Winks is back, second last, eight lengths off the lead. And Lasquetti Spirit is starting to tack on now. At the 800 metres, Stampede looking to make all. Three quarters in front to Jemadar. Then classic uniform from Prized Icon. Finland moves up into a three wide position. Followed by Who Shot the Barman, then Libran. Winks is still back, second last at the 600 metres, but starting to creep into the race now and three further back to Lasquetti Spirit on the point of the turn at Stampede in front Classic Uniform comes off the fence Price Dyke on third and Winks is starting to loop the field 400 out it's Stampede in front but Winks uh, Hugh Bowman just sitting there like a department store mannequin hasn't touched the mare and off she goes Price Dyke on going home into second and Libran's making ground but nudge nudge wink wink away she goes the champ and this is an Australian record of 16 Group 1s. Winks powers away to beat Price Icon and makes it three Chipping Nortons. Classic uniform third in front of Lebron. Then came Who Shot the Barman Stampede. Lasquetti Spirit, good break back to Vinland and Jemadar was last to finish. No matter where you're watching, anywhere on this earth, make no mistake about it, she is the best in the world. There are none better. Look at the ease that she does it yet again. 16 Group 1 wins. No horse has done that. She's gone past Black Caviar's record today. And 23 in a row. What a preparation she is in for. Duff, that was... 
as easy to watch as any of her wins. What do they say? Too much of a good thing can be wonderful, and wonderful she is. Look, I know it's Mardi Gras day in Sydney, but Winx is the only queen in town. There's no doubt about that. She is Queen Bee. Lizzie, she was so you know before the race with plenty of butterflies, hoping that she'd come back, but she's given everybody the right uh, information today, and she's back bigger and better than ever. They're hanging over the rafters here. Oh, mate, it's fantastic. Have a look at the crowd. You know, this is what people want to see, and we're happy that we can put the show on for them, mate. So, absolutely unbelievable. Now, a little wait to the George Rock. They are going to be talking about Walla, Winks, and Bowman forever. Oh, I'd have to say, mate, they're probably immortals now, and uh, I don't know where you go from there, but they are just at the top of their game, and I think they're going to be there for a long, long time. <laughs> was it? <laughs> don't you think? Um, the last part was, yeah, for sure. Um, but it's always a concern to see how horses come back, regardless of whether they're winks or who they are. So to see it come back like this is pretty special. Is it, is it possible the love for her grows even more? Great horse, and she's come back so well. Is it? I mean, we, we, we shouldn't ask the question if she's come back better, but <laughs> she just about looked it today. Her attitude's fantastic, and um, she's better now than she was when she was a four-year-old. Not much has changed in the last 12 months. Um, look, she knows her job, and she enjoys her job, and now but just there was something about you this week you just seem so calm and and you think that she really filled you with that confidence after you rode her on Thursday I did well she's been filling me with it all preparation and you know she's had the most vulnerable over the shorter distances we've seen when she's running the first up races and previous preparations over the 1400 it's the only time she's left flat footed and has us all scratching our head oh she's still got it and then she goes and uh, does it comfortably but today at the 1600 a nice genuinely run race and I had, a, I had a lovely run sort of close to the rear of the field but she was just travelled so kindly and her behaviour in the barriers you know that suggests to me that she's a very happy horse because that's where I've always been a little concerned she a little agitated, a little edgy and she's shown those signs throughout her whole career really but this preparation she hasn't shown any of those signs so it just uh, she, she might have finally matured maybe. It just continues to no, uh, but what she loves is that cut in the ground and, you know, a few question marks last prep, was she a little bit under par or not? And my take on that, out of the five runs she had, four were on firm tracks. They weren't good tracks, so they were rock hard and she performed at a high level every time, but she's just not as comfortable. And, you know, the one ret track that she did have was at Flemington and we saw what she did there in the Turnbull and a little bit of cut in the ground here this afternoon and... I mean, couldn't have asked for a, for a better return to racing, could we? How exciting. at Royal Ramwick. Uh, once again, we're in the presence of greatness and we saw Winks make it 23 straight and win her 16th Group 1 win in a row. You never get sick of it. Ron Duffers... He was, Greg, what is it, a three-year winning streak and uh, we're not getting sick of it, that's for sure. I know we can cast doubts on the opposition uh, there yesterday, but I don't think we can cast doubts on the performance. Uh, to think that she could get better at, at her age, I, I doubt it. But after looking at that race over and over again, that was just unbelievable there yesterday. yesterday. Look, the, the track was about, I'd say, three seconds out. Uh, she got within a second of her race record. That t tells me how good she went yesterday, Lizzie. Yeah, she... Decision, but, geez, I, I, I wouldn't... I don't want her to see her travel. I want to, I want to have her here. I wanted to see her win another Queen Elizabeth. I want to see her win another Cox Plate, um, which she can do. Uh, do we want to see her, on, you know, going overseas? What has she got to prove over there to the... To, to, you know, to Europe. I don't know. She, uh, the only time I'd like... Uh, Gl spare a thought for Glyn Schofield, guys. <laughs> he was on Hay List when Black Caviar was beating everyone up. <laughs> he was on Lure Remain one day and Winks went straight past him when he reckons he was, you know, at full throttle and flying. And, and you know, he's on Prized Icon, which was prime to the minute, and look what she does to him. I spoke to Glyn yesterday after the race and uh, he said uh, he just couldn't believe what just happened. He said, 
said the way she went past me is, is as good as she's ever gone, in his opinion. And I think Glenn Schofield's all right. We don't feel for Glenn. You know, all he has to do is open internet banking this morning and have a look at all those accounts <laughs> yeah, and how much money he's got in the bank and look at his property portfolio. And, true, true. <laughs> and there's true. no issue. We, we're like, Glenn's f- Another Group 1 on the program, race number seven, the James Bogues Premium Surround Stakes. The first time the surround has been run at Group 1 level, 1,400 metres in the Group 1 Surround. Yeah, well, Greg, I shouldn't say a race to get it out. Elise, it sat $2 there uh, from uh, Monday, actually, all through till was still $2.40 yesterday. Got to $2.70 uh, around about, uh, well, I think about... Gates open now, they're off and racing, and Shamook's jumped out okay. Quickly mustering on the rails and after 100 metres she's going to lead very comfortably. Rim Ram showing a bit of dash moving up with Shoals on the outside. So Shoals second, Rim Ram third. Melody Bell prominently placed then Moss Trip from Unforgotten. Yulong Zincheng. Torvalds keen back in the field from Frolic who's got the favourite Elise behind her and Touch of Mink is the last one. So it's Shamuk free striding in the lead. Out by a length on Shoals with Rim Ram travelling strongly in third on the inside of Melody Bell. Then came Moss Trip and the Red Jacket on the inside of Yulong Zinshang. Unforgotten, unforgotten stranded three deep, no cover. Then came Frolic from Elise, Torv on the outside. So Elise's in a bit of a pocket at this point. And two after touch of Mink. Shamook's had a good run in the lead of the 600. Out by three quarters to Shoals. Rim Ram easing three deep. Melody Bell out four deep. Moss Trip back on the inside, pinching ground. Then came Frolic. She's going up the inside from Yulong Zinshang. Elise's going to need some luck. She's still second last looking for the run now. Shamook goes for home at the 300. Two lengths clear from Shoals and Moss Trip back to the inside. Elise spotting the gap. She's starting to come into it now. Shoals is gunning it down to Shamook. Then came Elise, Rim Ram and Torval the outside. Shoals takes the lead. Torval the outside. Shoals in front from Torval and she